Kotakoto and welcome everybody. Um, I'm Tim Dene and today we're playing a game I designed called Deathmatch Island. Um, we'll talk more about that in a moment, uh, but first let's just go around and um, introduce ourselves with our name, pronouns, and uh, favorite piece of reality television or competition themed media. Um, I'll go first. As I mentioned, I'm Tim Dene. I use he, him pronouns. Lately, I've been loving um, Below Deck Down Under, which isn't actually deathmatch themed, but does involve boats and islands, and it's just incredible television. Highly recommend it. It's like Australian luxury cruises. Um, yeah, amazing stories and characters. Don't miss it. Um, Hamna, how about you? Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Hamna. I use any and all pronouns, and my favorite reality TV show is The Circle. It is not a death match, but it is a social death match. And yeah. I, I maintain, I will always maintain that if I was on the circle, I would win. Casting, if you're looking at this, <laughs> pull me on the circle. I'm ready. This is my audition. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pass it over to Vanna. Hi, I'm Vanna. My pronouns are she, her, and my favorite reality TV has got to be Love Island. Specifically, Australia Love Island is <laughs> just the cheapest and shittiest one, so it's so good. <laughs> um, but I will say, I'm watching my first Bachelor right now because they just released Ooh. the first ever Golden Bachelor. It's only two episodes in, but it's like everyone's like 50 or 60 plus and it's so oh. wholesome <laughs> That's That's so really cute. recommending that um and that is a death match because they're all close to dying and oh any God. amount of heartbreak <laughs> could send them Dear over God, the edge, so. <clears throat> i'm just saying you know take care of your elders <laughs> v you want to go next <laughs> i don't know if i can oh my god um Oh my gosh, hi guys. Uh, I'm Ben, I've been VoxVA on Twitter. Uh, I think this counts as the death match, Dong and Rampa. Uh, oh my, my you I was going to say the same thing. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess not to take any more thunder from Drag. Let's go. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> um, hi, yeah, I'm Drak or Draconics. You can find me on Twitter at Draconics. It's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. Uh, I use he, they pronouns. And yeah, I was going to say Duncan Rumper as well. It's just, um, I'll say, I'll say Duncan Rumper th uh, three, because I'm talking about the game specifically. Duncan Rumper three, I'll go with. Uh, so I can be a little bit different. Um, because it's just kind of really chaotic, um, ridiculous, and very, it's anime. So it's very, very, very over the top in anime. Um, so it's a lot of fun to watch and play. Amazing. All on the same page. Um, yeah, cool. So as I mentioned today, we're playing Deathmatch Island. It's a fast and flexible role-playing game uh, where players compete for riches, rewards, and followers as part of a sort of survival reality TV show, or is it uh, set on a mysterious island? It's inspired by Squid Game and Battle Royale and Lost and Control and um, Hunger Games and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, it's been published by Evil Hat Productions, and you can find out more about it at Evil Hat um dot com so yeah exactly let's uh let's jump into character creation now three of you have already made characters uh drake you have not so why don't yes. we hop over to roll 20 and we'll make your character and then we can introduce the others if you bring up your character sheet there yep very nice uh if you scroll right to the bottom there's a bunch of random tables um so the first thing you're going to do is roll up and random occupations that's a 1d 100 but if you just click the button it will do it for you and we'll find out what your former occupation was before you came to death match island <laughs> so you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur. oh i like you know, that you did say you wanted to be toxic so i mean yeah you're already, I did. You're already <laughs> getting there <laughs> 100 hey, i know and, uh, i know we're all on the island but have you considered bitcoin also, would you like to rent my Airbnb? <laughs> <laughs> and unsurprisingly, okay. that means your favored capability is snake mode. Um, so the yeah. five capabilities, so all the roles, all the contests will be one of these five um, sort of capabilities. So there's social game, which is any kind of um, social skills, whether positive or negative. Uh, interpersonal connection, there's snake mode, which is both lying and deceiving, but also sneaking and, and that kind of thing, stealth. 
this challenge beast, which is both physical challenges like running and climbing, as well as mental challenges. So it's sort of general competitiveness. So it could be completing a puzzle or, or some other kind of challenge. Uh, there's deathmatch, which is sort of self-explanatory, but um, you know, people from the armed forces or something might have a, a deathmatch capability. Uh, and then finally, there's Redacted, which um, is Redacted, but um, if you try and break the rules of the game, you'll have to use your Redacted capability. And you'll start with a D6 in that because you have not discovered about Deathmatch Island yet. Um, but Drag is playing an entrepreneur, which means um, their favorite capability is Snake Mode, which is either stealth and sneaking or um, just lying <laughs> <laughs> and deceiving and cheating. Um, cool. So do I get to bump that up or is that just... Yes. Um, so if you oh, make that a D8 on snake mode, yeah, so the rest start at D6. And then if you scroll back to those tables, the next thing is a name. You can just choose a name if you want, or you can roll one. Um, roll one. Um, you said... Uh, so the, oh. the random first names one is kind of like uh, masculine names, traditional boys' names, I guess. Random first names two is feminine names, and number three is sort of gender neutral names. Let's go with random first name two, the more feminine names. Ophelia. Ophelia. I like that. Well, that's Ooh. cute. I'm about to drown drag. What? <laughs> because of the character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're changing your character's name to Hamlet, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet yeah, did Waldo, nothing wrong. Waldo Hamlet. Uh, and then Waldo random Hamlet. surname. Hamlet Vega. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia Reimer. Oh, my. That's I'm an entrepreneur if I've ever heard it. Yeah. You sell perfumes or some shit. Oh, my. I, oh, what's that? What do I sell? I'll think of, I'll figure you it out. You smell perfumes in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> no, there definitely is definitely a pyramid scheme involved when trying to decide if it is perfumes yeah. or not. It's goop. Essential goop oil. Goop. Goop. It's geep. Legally, geep. I don't think we it can be goop. Yeah, probably not. Uh, yeah. Legally, right. just goop. That's right. Ga gap. Goop. Gap. No, gap, gap is a different company. Oh, you're right. to be geep or something. Geep. I really like geep. Okay. Um, and there's no role for pronouns, but you can just pick those. Yeah, I think it should be any pronouns. She, he, they. Great. Uh, and then there's four more for eyes, build, hairstyle, and just some random details. So you can just click those in order if you want. Again, none of this has to be random. So if you don't like something, you can re-roll it or just pick out of your imagination. I'll make it all entirely random. Why not? Yeah, go for it. Live dangerously. Uh, eyes, be, be the eyes. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, will we build shaggy hair? Perfect teeth. I hate perfect this bitch. Teeth. <laughs> the perfect teeth and beady eyes. Oh, oh, so the dice want oh. you to tell a story. They want God, you to be a particular damn. kind of character. Ophelia's dying first, I'm calling it. Wow, wow. <laughs> During the deathmatch phase, Vanna's character immediately goes to Ophelia <laughs> yeah, and no marks them. <laughs> Um, and from the row we did earlier from the um, session zero, my, my number is 71. Fantastic. So I still had that. Um, yeah, perfect. So you can add all that stuff to the description field, the, the eyes build here and um, random detail. Um, and so other than that, that is basically it. That's your character. Um, that was quick. Ophelia Reimer. Yeah, it is pretty quick. You can pick a nickname now if you want, or you can let the others pick one for you as we as we play. I'm not letting others pick one for me. I, <laughs> hey, I don't hey, trust hey. the one that they're going to pick. Speci specifically Vanna, but uh, I'm not going to let anyone pick Ratty one for Ratty McRatterson. <laughs> <laughs> I think my character's name is going to be, my nickname is going to be better than Waldo. I think it's going to be, it's going to be my nickname. <laughs> uh, I'll think on what the nickname is. It'll, it'll come to me during play. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so, so the other sorry, bit... really quick, Tim. I was under the impression yeah. maybe we got a nickname if we hit a certain number of followers. Yes, that's right. So, okay. um, mm -hmm. in the course of a typical game, uh, so you have this sort of advancement mechanism called followers, which we'll talk more about shortly. But basically, 
Uh, in every contest, you gain followers by the tens of thousands. And um, once you hit certain milestones, like 400,000 followers, your name dice goes up. So you, um, that sort of represents the fact that as you become more popular with the whatever followers are, viewers maybe, um, production will sort of tip things in your favor because they want you know your good entertainment or you're good for Deathmatch Island, whatever that means. Um, so you start with zero followers, you hit these milestones. Per the rules, yeah, you get a nickname once you hit your first... Um, your first follower milestone, which is 400,000 followers. Um, but if you just want to start with one because we're playing it one shot, that's fine as well. Or you can leave it blank, wait till we hit that milestone, and then, you know, by then you'll know a bit more about the character and the nickname. The nickname might come a bit more easily. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can I'll think look. of it. Uh, so the other bits of character creation that we need to do, we'll introduce the other characters in a moment, I think, once we hit the boat. Um, but you're going to start with an initial motivation. So I'm going to deal you each a secret card. Ooh, I um, love secrets. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So at the bottom of roll 20, you should see a card pop up under your name. If you click on that once and then double click on the card itself, oh. uh, it will pop up big on the screen. So this is your initial motivation. Um, it is, as I said, you kind of wake up on the boat without many memories. You, you remember your occupation and name, but there's a lot that's hazy. But you have this sort of initial motivation that you start with. You might not even be sure why, um, but this is what you go into the game, kind of motivating you in the game. And um, over the course of the game, we're going to do two flashbacks to your life before Deathmatch Island. And you can use those to kind of explore why you started with this motivation, which you might not be aware of yet. Um, it's just your initial motivation. It can change. It could change as soon as we start playing. Um, but that's kind of where you start from. And, and you can kind of play off that. Maybe you end up at the end of the game, you're a complete, completely different sort of mental state, or maybe you double down on it. Um, that's kind of up to you to explore. Uh, have you all found those and had a look at that? Bonza. I, there we go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate that noise you just All made. Right. Uh, okay, Drag. <laughs> Something about that just wasn't right. I don't know. <laughs> That's suspicious. That's, That's weird. weird. <laughs> what do you mean? It says it says world peace. Oh. Yeah, yeah. sure, right. So yeah. you Mr. yeah, Mr. you joined our death match contest for world peace. Sometimes oh. people need to die for world peace. <laughs> and uh at the end, we'll share what each other's initial motivations were just for fun. See, so, uh, yeah, you can kind of, maybe it'll help explain why certain people acted a certain way, or maybe it won't. We'll find out. Um, so that's initial motivations. The final piece before we sort of get into a little bit more about trust and stuff is the uniform for this season. Um, you can either pick one or you can roll one randomly as a group. You're all in, start in the same uniform. Um, and all the other competitors will too. You can see those there on the top left of the screen. We've got a sort of a turtleneck and blazer situation, uh, or it could be a polo neck and shorts with some trainers, or it could be a classic 90s like cargo pants and um, button down shirt, uh, or a tracksuit, kind of squid game style, or just t shirt and slacks if you want to keep it comfy, or a sort of boiler suit, full jumpsuit kind of thing. Does anyone have any um, initial reactions, or do you just want to roll this one? I, I love a jumpsuit, but I also love I was them. also <laughs> going to say jumpsuit, not going to oh lie. Oh my gosh, me too. Really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, that's got to be the jumpsuit. Drac, are you which feeling one are the jumpsuit? Yeah. I was leaning to the, the like, kind of uh, turtleneck. I feel like that. Feels I was going to uh, say, yeah. is the compromise we wear the jumpsuit open and there's a turtleneck underneath? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what I think is that we go with the jumpsuit, but Ophelia just hates it. They hate Ooh, that. That's okay. Like, I, they were really not about it. They this. were like, I prefer my neck strangled. <laughs> I mean. Drac. That can be arranged. <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a death match. People are going to die. Like, people couldn't, strangling might be involved. Who knows? Okay, no, um, wow. Yeah, I'll go with death. I'll go with the jumpsuit. Um, all right, I'll go with the jumpsuit. I like Love the idea that. of that. Perfect. Okay, Kellers. Um, Again, you could roll for this randomly, but we have uh, essentially a brown. Oh. We have a uh, sea foam, sort of Ooh. a light green. Yeah. We've got uh, salmon, sort of a pinky color. I think since we pick the format, Drac, you should get to pick the color. Goldenrod. 
uh, aubergine, or cerulean, just a nice blue. Ooh. Wow. Again, because I just like the idea of Ophelia just hating what they're wearing. I think it's like a really <laughs> ugly brown. <laughs> You're <laughs> really gross brown. There it um, is. Yeah, Awful. that. Yeah. It's like we're really there. Exactly. It's immersive. <laughs> the future. <laughs> uh, so you, you wake up, as I said, um, you, you're not sure how you got here, you, but you, you wake up to the smell of... Um, Diesel fuel, salt water, and tar. You're on the small fishing boat. Um, one of you is currently operating the two-stroke outboard motor as this boat kind of chops through the rolling gray sea towards an approaching island, the only thing you can see around here. Um, who is on the outboard motor? Who is driving the boat? What was everybody's Doesn't jobs? Mean... Good question. What are your What are your occupations? My character is a sheep farmer. I do not think that he knows how to drive a boat. Water sheep, though. Here we go. Water sheep? Yeah. Yes, yeah. a famous um, water sheep. My character is a steel worker, so maybe they can, like, guess how the machinery kind of functions. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Okay, so, so Monica is on the outboard motor. Um, do you want to describe a little bit about Monica? Sure. Um, character name, Monica Collins. A description, smiling eyes, sinewy build, undercut hair, and a crooked nose. Uh, they're a little quiet at the moment uh, because they're they're free balling this fucking uh, motor. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure everybody you know stays in one piece while we figure out what the hell is going on. Perfect. And Monica was a steel worker, which means mm -hmm. um, the favorite capability is challenge beast. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, great. And so we have also. Why don't we introduce the rest of the characters now? So do you want to describe um, Waldo? Uh, yeah, Waldo is uh, an older gentleman with uh, sort of those uh, glittering, coquettish eyes. <laughs> an, angular, uh, an angular face and body structure, also with an undercut, twinning. Um, he, when you do see him walk, he walks with a limp and um, kind of... Um, you know, if you if you know what's good for you, the first thing you notice about him is he has really powerful hands, really strong hands. That's what you want in a scoutmaster. Um, <laughs> the what's way his, um... I can build a fire. <laughs> <laughs> what is his favorite capability? Uh, favorite ca capability is also challenge beast uh, because mm. he was formerly a scoutmaster. Sure. So he's got he's got all sorts of physical skills ladies <laughs> and what about walid uh walid safi is i think sitting on the edge of the boat uh hands against the edge uh leg bouncing very excitedly he is a rather tall 511 uh, person with these dark eyes a very muscular build that betrays a life of having done like physical labor and z has very tidy hair it's in um i think like a bun kind of pinned back and z has these uh, small little bangs and these like cute little spiral bits kind of hanging off framing his face and when you look at his face there's something a little bit unusual about it you can't quite pin what it is about your face that feels a little off a little uncanny valley but there is something a little strange about it and i think um he kind of just like looks around there's this very excited energy about him as he's looking at everybody uh, on this boat and walid used to be a sheep farmer so his uh favorite capability is also challenge beast funnily oh enough <laughs> yeah we've got a stack deck uh and then finally ophelia who we've already heard about what is what's ophelia doing in this moment yeah um i think ophelia is panicking a little bit <gasps> that the edge <laughs> that the edge of the boat kind of gripping tightly to the edge of it i'm um, looking in all directions for any signs of any land or um, any um, vessel that they're familiar with because they're not entirely sure how they got here but they know they're not meant to be here and worst of all that they're here in a very very ugly jumpsuit 
and there's nothing <laughs> to change into um, other than that. Um, they're about, I'd say, like maybe 5'10", five, 5'11", five, very um, slim, kind of lithe form. Um, I think more like, I guess, like more of a build of like a, like a ballet dancer than anything else. Um, but, but they're very much not used to the seas, um, especially when in a boat not being um, sailed by one of their people. Um, they don't know who these people are. Um, don't trust any of these people right now and don't trust where they're heading to right now either. Um, usually you can probably tell that they usually have their hair very kept, but right now I think the humidity of it mm. is causing it to be almost a, a frizzy shaggy mess on their head. So all in all, they're really struggling. Um, they, they're really not enjoying this whole situation right now. Um, yeah. And they're just kind of yeah, muttering to themselves, looking over their shoulder at these strangers on this boat. Love to imagine those beady eyes scanning around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, are uh, there any yeah. like blankets or anything on the boat, or are we like here just us, no other supplies? Just you, no supplies. Um, uh, just a terminal, which I'll come to in a second. Mm. Um, yeah. You don't remember how long you've been on this boat or how you got there. Um, you don't remember much now that you think about it. You're not sure what happened to the clothes you were in. Now you're all wearing these matching brown jumpsuits and you've each got a strange wristwatch on, a sort of Casio-style 80s thing that says follower counter on it. Um, oh, my Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> an old uh, terminal in the prow of the boat crackles to life at this moment. It's kind of scratchy, sepia-tinted footage, a recording from the 1970s or 1980s maybe, um, this recording shows a soundstage with a person standing on it looking straight at the camera. Uh, he's a slim Indian man. He's in his late 20s or early 30s. He's wearing a bow tie and a woolen vest and a lab coat. Uh, he's got a scar down one cheek. And as the recording plays, he says, um, Congratulations. You have been selected to participate in Deathmatch Island. Winning will mean wealth, fame and freedom. You may be experiencing some confusion and memory loss. This is normal following the selection and recruitment process. It is important that you do not panic. Look around you. These fellow competitors are your team. You might like to try some icebreakers. Trust and good teamwork are crucial to victory. In two minutes, phase one will begin. In this phase, you will explore Island One, complete challenges, acquire resources, and meet other contestants. Alliances will be formed and threats will be eliminated. At the end of phase one, a klaxon will sound three times. This signals phase two, the battle royale. Only six competitors will survive this phase. These survivors progress to the end game. The ultimate winner will be returned safely to their home with an unbelievable sum of money. Remember that all results will provide valuable data to the <laughs> program. Good luck, competitors, and remember, play to win. And uh, the terminal shuts off. At this moment, the device on your wrist, the, the follower counter, it beeps once and prints a small slip of paper. It's got little dot matrix dots along it, like it's a tiny dot matrix printer. Uh, and it just says zero followers. You've each got zero followers, whatever that means. Um, so the final thing to do before we get to the island, we're going to go around and take a turn. Um, take turns or you're going to take turns asking each other a trust building question you each have this printout it's kind of salt stained and damp but in the pocket of your jumpsuit you have a list of um trust building questions which i'll put on screen now and you're each going to take turns asking another person one of these questions um and you'll ask a different person so everyone should ask and answer once is basically the idea uh, and when someone asks you these uh, the question off the list you're going to answer with a flashback to your to a memory your character has from their time before deathmatch island um and the idea is you both want to sort of answer the question but also maybe start to hint at what your um or you could sort of play off what your initial motivation is you don't have to tell us what the initial motivation is but uh, maybe you want to start building towards that or maybe it contrasts that or maybe it um confirms that or whatever it is does that make sense uh, so if your initial motivation is like paranoia, your answer to this, your what we see in this flashback might show why you're a paranoid person. Or it might show that you used to be a really trusting person. And so then we'd later find out what made you paranoid or whatever. 
Um, so who wants to go first? Just pick another character and choose a question off the list and ask them a question. I think Walid jumps at the chance to talk to the other people on this boat. Uh, in particular, I think uh, Z looks over at Monica, who is fiddling with this rig with the motor and like sidles closer to you, just like on the edge of the boat and is sitting across from you and says, so uh, we're all here. So I guess we might as well get to know each other, right? Um, what what did you what did you like doing back home? What hobby are you most passionate about? Can you tell me about it? Uh, sure, I guess. Um, and of course, that kind of drifts off to a different place, a different time, and Technicolor. Uh, with Monica, uh, just moving around a house with uh so many like little kids of varying ages. Uh, cooking, cleaning, uh, scribbling on some homework, signing a permission slip, uh, possibly kissing a random older woman like a grandmother or a great aunt on the forehead and just tending to a house, which wouldn't necessarily be a hobby, but it is cer certainly something uh, they truly enjoyed. So as we get that description, uh, we settle back down uh, to Monica, uh, completely stone face. I, I, I never had any hobbies. I just kind of fended for myself and my folks. Uh, sorry if that's not really an icebreaker. Um, Maybe we could fend for each other here together. I'm Wooly, by the way. And she uh, holds out your hand. Nice to meet you. Uh, we might need to keep our hands to ourselves for the time being. We oh. might have to kill each other soon, so uh, sorry. But I'm sure they don't really mean that. <laughs> it looked pretty serious. Right. Sorry. No, no, d don't, don't apologize. And I think Willie just kind of like settles back and is just like awkwardly drumming on the side of the boat, like watching Monica continue to fiddle with this machine. I mm -hmm. think Waldo makes an attempt to break the awkward tension that's just arisen. <laughs> well, the you know, it's probably been awkward this whole time, but another blip, another a peak of awkwardness and goes, <clears throat> uh, well, what about you, Wally? Uh, uh, One's, uh, you know, uh, do you have any enemies? <laughs> just a normal question. Hold on, I don't want to ask that. <laughs> just can you imagine meeting somebody for the first time? Really, so, got any enemies? <laughs> Sorry, it was the first question I read. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> uh, what about... You, Walid. Uh, why don't Why don't you tell us about? Um, I don't know, like a moment where you were really proud of yourself or something that you did. Oh, um, and I think Walid uh, runs his hands through like a little bit of his hair, like untidying it just a tiny bit as he does so, and he thinks back to his life beforehand and. What we see is instead of the rolling waves of the ocean that we are currently on is the rolling hills of Zir Pasture back home on Zir Farm, where there are just a myriad of sheep kind of around. And I think we see sort of snippets of a scene in which there is a wolf that is terrorizing uh, the farm and Walid is able to chase it away, not through violence, not through um, anything uh, sort of more primal or feral but rather something a little bit more comforting something a little bit more loving and able to sort of connect to this creature in such a way as to understand its need is to understand that it does not truly want to hurt and is able to protect both the sheep and allow for this wolf to uh leave safely and i think when we come back as the hills transition visually back into the waves and Waleed's dark eyes are on you uh, Waldo and he smiles at you and there's this softness to his features and he says well I've 
always thought that there nobody ever really wants to do anything actually bad right we're all just people we're all just animals in circumstances and so i think something that i'm really proud of is being able to recognize that in other people in other animals and being able to understand where people are coming from and so looking back over at monica they can't really mean it you know well i can appreciate your optimism certainly i appreciate and that I think, sorry um i think monica jerks uh, their head in ophelia's direction what about you one percent <laughs> Um, Ophelia has been like just messing with her hair, trying to pat it down, make it somewhat pleasant, but it just keeps springing back up. And they turn to face you, Monica, and go, "What's about me?" Oh, we're doing these like fancy icebreakers. I'm pretty sure you did like this at a company retreat. Uh, tell me about a time you almost died. Oh, um, I've never been asked that one at a company retreat. A uh, time I almost died. Um, and as they ponder this, um, again, you drift off to another place, another time. Um, I'm going to give a serious answer or a ridiculous one. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to go uh, ridiculous. You see um, Ophelia with a bunch of their lackeys surrounding them just absolutely covered in bags and boxes of things that Frida has bought um it's almost like a, a you can you can barely see the people holding it they're holding you just see walking bags and um boxes of shoes and clothes that they bought and one of them um titles up to Ophelia and says hey could you hold this for me I need to tie my shoelace and places um one of the bags into um, Ophelia's hand before she's even really able to give a response. And almost exactly as it happens, Ophelia steps off the curb and their heel snaps and they fall uh, face first <laughs> in the middle of the street. No cars are coming, nothing, there's no real danger, but Ophelia gets up and starts wailing um, as their life flashed before their eyes. They could have died just then. Um, and we will return to the present, as Ophelia says, there's, in my line of work, you come into many near-death experiences. They all kind of blur together at some point. You get used to it. It's the norm. I see. I see. Wow. That is so inspiring. Oh, I meant to ask a question to who I wasn't paying attention. Who haven't, hasn't been asked? You okay? Um, well, I suppose I tell me about a memorable sports victory. Um, okay, do horses count? I suppose, yes, I, I suppose horse racing is, is a whole sport. Well, it's not really racing, <laughs> that's when we we cut to the, the flashback of uh, of like. Waldo, as a scoutmaster, has gotten really excited and taken uh, his like um, scout scouts on a trip. And I'm thinking this is like a, a you know, not just boys, but it can be of any of any gender identity uh, kind of troop and has taken them to a horse ranch uh, and is trying to show them um, how to not be afraid of the horse, but is secretly very afraid of the horse. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all you know little kids so they're all impressed and he's doing a good job covering it and he's but he knows he's like trembling as he gets up on the horse uh and he's got his like a goofy little helmet on because you got to do safety first when you're doing such activities uh and then with the help of like the person that's helping them and is basically leading the horse on a on a, a lead um does the barrels formation uh, and by the time he's at the end, he feels as though like he's done a, he, he did a rodeo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he climbs off and he's like, 
he's like feeling pretty chuffed but then he turns around and all the little kids like clap for him uh and he just feels like uh like number one in that moment yeah well they um and he uh it pulls back into himself and is just like yeah so if uh if that counts you know i wouldn't call it horse racing but you know i, I did the barrels <laughs> yes wonderful just just to add something to that flashback i think the person holding the horse helping is an older indian man and he has that same scar down his cheek that you saw in the um in the uh, recording oh huh. that's interesting probably, probably a coincidence <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of guys that look just like him. <laughs> that very distinctive uh, individual. <clears throat> so, great. You should all now, believe it or not, you all mark one trust with each other because of that. Um, so you should all start with one trust with each other character because of those trust building questions. Um, so just write in the trust section on the character sheet, just write, um, just write each name and then one trust with each. And trust you can use for lots of things, but it's very helpful. Uh, and there will be opportunity to get more trust during the game. Um, there's also going to be the opportunity for one more flashback each before the end. So um, there's one more chance to kind of uh, show us a bit and to discover a bit about who your character was before they um, before they came here, which again could be something surprising or a dark secret or a twist or whatever whatever you want. We'll find out when we get to that, which will be about halfway through. Um, so as you're sort of putting away these trust building questions, seagulls cry out in the distance and you can see you're almost at this island now. Um, it's quite warm, it's sort of subtropical. You have no idea where you are. There's a steep mountain cloaked in thick green vegetation that dominates the view. You, you see some signs of uh, habitation. There's some concrete jetties to dock your boat. Um, there's a seaside village, a small industrial port. You see a radio mast on one of the hills and a lighthouse. Um, and it is time for your first decision as a team. Um, where will you land on Island One? Now, um, there's always going to be a leader, and the leader makes certain decisions, like where you go next. At the moment, Monica is the leader, just by virtue of the one on the upboard <laughs> motor. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Uh, so she kind of has that decision. Um, but you, obviously, you can discuss this. Uh, so there are three places you can land, which you'll see on the map here um there is the fishing village there is the industrial port towards the sort of northeast and then finally right down the bottom southwest is the lighthouse which is a restricted area even from here at sea you see big like no entry signs on the hills above the lighthouse making it clear that um you are not supposed to land at the lighthouse but uh, who's going to stop you if you choose to so uh where does Monica take the boat? To which of those three landing points? Well, above game kiddos, how are we feeling? <laughs> um, um, I mean, out of character, I always like me a restricted area. <laughs> me too, <laughs> bestie. <laughs> yeah, I think Monica would be like, oh, over there, over there. I just yes. like point at the, the lighthouse. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Um, I don't think that we're supposed to be there. The, there's fine, a bunch of fine, signs that I... I'm. I when I where I go, I'm allowed to be, and I'm going there. Can we go over there? Oh, oh well, it's good that we have someone very important with us then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have security clearance because Ophelia is with us. Uh, typically, I would disagree, but I think that would be pretty advantageous. We might have less people to deal with on the way to whoever else next so many objections more time to get to know all of you mm. yes something tells me this isn't ultimately a bonding exercise but again i i appreciate you know your enthusiasm you always got to make the best out of out of your circumstances at least we can agree so i think we are going to the lighthouse <laughs> Perfect. Pinned. All right. Interesting choice. So, um... <laughs> don't say it like that. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. 
you see a couple of other um, little fishing boats in the distance, but they're headed towards the fishing village and um, the industrial port. And so indeed, you don't see anyone else around here. Uh, it's given its distance from the other landmarks, and there, there's this large warning sign on the shore that you, you could see from sea. Uh, it's very quiet here. Uh, there's a little dock, so you pull up and you can tie off the boat and, and hop off. Um, there's a lot of whitewashed concrete and this lighthouse looming up above. Um, there's the sharp smell of formaldehyde and disinfectant on the on the air. Uh, and you hear a loose wooden gate kind of creaking on the wind and then it kind of slams shut and then it creaks again. But other than that, everything's very quiet. Um, now, before you enter the lighthouse, there is, there's going to be a contest. So the way this game is going to work is that there's going to be basically one role for every location and we're going to resolve the whole scene, the whole sort of challenge once per location and we're all going to roll dice together figure out what the dice results are and from there you're going to tell me what those results mean and what happens based on what the dice tell us um now usually the leader would tell me what um approach you want to take but in this case because you've chosen a restricted site mm -hmm. the only way to get in is a redacted contest oh. so i'm gonna <laughs> so i'm gonna what roll the target wrong? number and then you all are gonna roll. Um, they're gonna roll to see how it goes. Um, let me find the dice for this. So this is the lighthouse. the The contest here, the obstacle, is these psychological countermeasures. So as you go to approach the lighthouse, there's gonna be sonic weapons, so weird like sirens and noises, and flashing lights, so like strobing lights and stuff. So there's basically these like psychological countermeasures that are gonna try and trigger weird subliminal headaches and programming in your brains. Uh, and so the contest is how do you sort of get past that? Um, how do you overcome that? Do you do you draw on some inner strength? Do you have some trick? Um, we, we will find out. But to begin with, I will just roll the target number. Now this contest, uh, this is a redacted contest. So the target number is nine. So you want to get at least a nine or above. The good news is if you meet that result, you get the, to tick a number of new follower boxes equal to the target number. So if you succeed here, you get 90,000 new followers um, if you're the best one, or 5,000, uh, 50,000 rather, five boxes if you, uh, um, if you succeed, but you're not the best. But we'll cover that in a moment. So this is a redacted contest. Now you'll see there it is dangerous and restricted. So dangerous means if you fail here, you take an injury um because yeah it's dangerous <laughs> you take some <laughs> you know, out. migraine based injury or something or maybe you injure yourself oh but, no uh, that's too real yeah. Not migraine <laughs> <laughs> it is also restricted so you'll see on your character sheet you have all these um acquisitions you can pick up you start with mm -hmm. none um but the ones at the top like the weapons and equipment usually you can use those in contests to help your chances in restricted contests you can't because Production disables them because you're mm. going where you shouldn't. So they don't want you using the well, equipment. Well, lucky you. for us, we don't have any. <laughs> you don't have any. That's right. Uh, you can pick up redacted acquisitions, which are basically things you're not meant to have. So they could be like gum, um, gum or a staff member's keys or a key card or something like that. Uh, but you don't have any of those either. So what you can do is scroll to the top of the sheet and click where it says redacted. And you're going to roll a redacted contest. The target number there, you can put in the box there. And do is we nine. add die now or after we roll? Uh, as you go through this little dice prompt thing, it will ask you what dice okay, to okay. add. Each, it's like kind of a series of windows. So the first uh, thing it's going to ask you is the target number, which is nine. You click submit. Then it's going to ask you occupation die. So that means that's up to you to decide. It's not up to me but you decide whether you think your occupation will help you here. And that can be however however you think <clears throat> it could apply. It could be anything. I think um, I'm around screaming kids all the time, so I probably exactly. am unaffected so a perfect by example. the sirens. Yeah. That is a perfect the example. The buying so can... of sheep constantly. <laughs> Honestly, they'd be screaming. <laughs> they do be screaming. I mean, that does count. <laughs> Um, yeah. I want to say the heavy machinery, like just the pounding yeah, and the lights and the sounds True. and stuff. So. We all have so, yeah, migraines that... all the time, except for Ophelia. <laughs> I have people to have Who migraines. Who gives for me. other people migraines? I have people <laughs> to have migraines exactly. for me. <laughs> the 
could be the flashing lights. Um, Maybe, you know, Ophelia, she's in oh, the club. Oh, yeah, at the club. Yeah, that's, that's right. Like, I think Ophelia fully thinks that, like, paparazzi and stuff are around for them. But it's more the case that they're around, like, they're around people who the paparazzi and stuff are around. So, like, they, they get, the, like, the, the second-hand flashes and sure. uh, loud noises. It's not very much not for them, but they like to think it is. Um, but, you know, so I definitely you... do. Yeah, I love that. So if you feel your occupation applies, just uh, click that drop down and, and click the relevant occupation. Uh, the next step is you can spend fatigue to add a second capability. So none of you are very good at redacted contests yet because you don't know anything about the game. Uh, so you're all going to roll D6 here, but you can spend one fatigue to bring in a second capability, which is where you, you bring in some other skills you have. So... By default, this is using your knowledge of the game to get past this programming. Um, but maybe you bring in Challenge Beast, and that could represent the fact that um, you're just going to run as fast as you can, and that way you're exposed to less of this um, noise. Science. Uh, <laughs> exactly, that's science. <laughs> or maybe you bring less, in... Less exposure. Less exposure is better. That's science. It's, it checks out. It depends. Um, or maybe you bring in social game and that's more about, you know, the, the bonds you have with the other players around you. Or Use the other players as earmuffs. Exactly. <laughs> that Snake feels like some something Ophelia would do. <laughs> Ophelia would. Ophelia has such a bad idea of Ophelia. Ophelia's a wonderful person. You just need to get to you know. You literally that. said, "I pay other people to have migraines for me." <laughs> 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 that insinuates you don't have a migraine, but you're intentionally giving someone else a migraine. So that what? So that you have something to complain about tangentially. <laughs> <laughs> God, I not, hate it when my migraines, the migraines pop up. It just makes it impossible for my people to do anything. Mm. Uh, <laughs> my people. <laughs> uh, um, so if you want to do that, just click one of the fatigue dots and then choose the capability that you're adding in, presumably whatever you're good at. Uh, it is a one shot, so I'd recommend just using your resources. Yeah, but, I'll um, use it. Up, up to you. I already added my occupation, though. Well, you know, st stack it up, I'd say. Well, I've already skipped that window, Tim, so okay, it's too well, late. Okay, well, you're bad. There's we'll no you. back button. That's right, in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the next window is other advantage die. So this is where you could spend trust with another competitor, so you'll have trust. Um, so in that case, you would borrow a copy of whatever the relevant skill is here. So because mm. it's redacted, you would take a copy of the redacted die. So you're all D6, so we we'll just add one D6. So you could spend trust uh, to do that, and that just represents them helping you, basically. Uh, I think Walid is trusting in Ophelia's very important status here, um, <laughs> and is going to use that to help. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So just type in 1d6 into that box if you're spending that, and mark down that you no longer have any trust with Ophelia, which feels a bit right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, first right. thing. I want to spend mine with Ophelia too. I'm wow. about to find out. I'm about to find out that Ophelia is not actually that important, and that's why I have no more trust left. You know, that feels right and good. Let me get that D. Yeah, let's oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and no one has trust with Ophelia. Maybe. Perfect. Fine. I'm just wait man. till the next flashback when you find out she's a really good person. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, just wait. Uh, and so then the final step is acquisitions. So if you had acquisitions to spend, you would just type in a number equal to the to the number on the acquisition you're spending. So if you had a um, a rocket launcher, let's say that has got a little three next to it, so you'd type in a three there. Um, but you do not have a rocket launcher; you got nothing. So you can leave okay, that at zero. But hear me out. I found one <laughs> on the rocks oh, next oh, to the so. lighthouse. Yeah, <laughs> it's a um <laughs> oh my god it's intricate i, I we, there's a cosplayer stuck on this island <laughs> so for all these contests them. we're all going to roll them at the same time because it's more exciting that way so if you just stop at this step each time and then when everyone's ready we'll all click submit at the same time i feel like everyone's probably ready this time yeah i'm ready yeah, right. i'm ready heck yeah okay click submit and we'll see what happens owie pain suffering uh wally well very good okay cool so I'm the um, only one who failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for my trust in Ophelia. What I mean, so the, I three out two out of three is good for me. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is uh, Monica and Walid both need to roll a d6 just to break the tie. Um, so if you could both roll oh. one d6, 
and we'll just roll. Oh, out. I got a one. No. <laughs> and then got a six. Wow. The duality. The duality. God has chosen a favorite. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, I understand my role as God's accursed one. <laughs> That's fine. Little imp for fun. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is um, figure out what this means mechanically, and then I'll hand over to you all, and we'll start with the lowest and go to the highest, and you'll describe um, what this all looks like and how it goes down as you make it to the lighthouse and, and break past these um, defense mechanisms. So just mechanically, um, Waldo, you get you do get 10,000 new followers. You, you've been on screen, so you can mark one new follower box. That's right. Everyone loves an underdog. Exactly. Well, I should of. get more than ten. Oh. Uh. And you mark one injury. Ow, my leg. So you're going to take an injury here. Um, Ophelia and Walid both get fifty thousand new followers. So you get half the the target number. So you can mark five new follower boxes. Um, and Monica gets ninety thousand new followers. So you can mark nine of those yeah, little uh... new follower boxes. The people love you. <clears throat> Exactly. I mean, it's Monica Darwin's came right. in with protagonist energy, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with Waldo. Uh, Waldo, I guess you charge <laughs> off first. How do things go, go badly and how do, how do you get injured? <clears throat> this seems pretty, I, I feel like this is pretty indicative of his experience with his scouts. Is he's often trying to show to them how to do something and and messes it up or is incapable of doing it <laughs> but they're children and they think he did it right or are impressed anyway uh but these are adults so i don't think it's going to work that way so i think i think he what he does is he dives out of the boat before it actually reaches the shore for like no reason and is oh. like mm. i've got this <laughs> and then i i mean you said we're somewhere tropical so i bet the water's not that cold um, no. But maybe he doesn't realize how heavy the jumpsuit is going to get once it's completely mm. soaked. And I imagine we have like boots on or something mm. <laughs> and just immediately starts uh, floundering and it's like staying head above water, but it's not cute and it's not impressive. And the boat, <laughs> it can easily pass him as he struggles to get just to the, I assume it's like some sort of rocky bottom at the bottom of the yeah. the lighthouse. So pain suffering so is your injury you're partially drowned like is that um i think my injury is my pride no i think waterlogged is definitely yeah. i mean i imagine even once i get on shore i'll i'll move a bit slower and uh god forbid there's like any it gets cold at any point i'll just die of hypothermia and did you mark trust with Oph with uh, ophelia did i you marked it off trust? Yeah, yeah. So in what way were you trying to um, lean on Ophelia for help here? I mean, obviously she failed you. <laughs> <laughs> I... That's a great <laughs> question. Um, <clears throat> well, you said, right, you said Ophelia was saying, you know, they had connections. Is that what she was kind of porting? I think, no, I think they're just more saying that I'm important. So if I don't have connections, I'll make them. Like I'm, I this. I, you know, I might not be allowed here now, but once I step foot on there, I will be kind of. Okay, vibe. so maybe it just it just removed Waldo's inhibitions a little bit more. It was just like, oh yeah. well, there's a, a there's a fail safe built in here, so I should just yeah. go for it. <laughs> Philly has strong real housewives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. Um, and so Ophelia is actually next. So Ophelia, you succeeded here. You didn't quite like close Help. it up. How does Ophelia? <laughs> how does Ophelia get the group to the like towards the goal? So I think I see. Um, I see Waldo dive off the boat. I'm just very confused, and I turn to everyone and say, "Don't do what he just did. We should just dock and step off." Um, um, and as we get close and we start hearing these, um, the see the flashing lights, the, the, the psychological warfare that they've like planted and uh, uh, initiated around this lighthouse, I just yell over the den like, just cover your ears and shield your eyes. Trust me, you'll get used to it when you're around a crowd I'm always around. And they kind of like <laughs> just cover their faces as if really like they're just hiding their face from paparazzi and just speed walk towards, a like, power walk towards the um, lighthouse. And every sort of looking behind us be like, come on, just like this. And just power walk um, towards it. 
Um, I didn't use any yeah, trust yeah. in anyone because you don't need any trust. They don't believe in themselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. And as the uh, lights and sirens intensify and that migraine is getting worse, uh, Waleed comes up. Um, how does Waleed overcome the next bit? I think, well, one way is that Walid will rely on Ophelia's advice a little bit in order to get him through this. And Z will observe the way that Ophelia covers their eyes and sort of walks through as if this is paparazzi going after him. And so uh, Walid will mimic that and is going to um, take into account all of the experience that he has listening to the unending bleeding of uh, like tens of sheep all at once and is going to i think channel that um into this in order to block out the sirens as much as possible it's more so the flashing lights that he is not used to and that is where sort of that ophelia's advice um kind of comes into play and helps z uh manage to get through here and i think the way that uh Walid in particular is able to perhaps uh stymie or prevent uh, some of the damage potentially physically on himself from this sensory overload that's happening is through uh zero physical build uh Z is going to, I think, like use the fact that he is a little bit stronger than everyone's, a little bit more uh, well built, and is going to, I think, just like climb over these rocks uh, that are surrounding the lighthouse and like walk a little bit faster. So I imagine that perhaps, despite the fact that Ophelia stepped off of the boat first, I think Walid like overtakes Ophelia at some point, um, and as he is walking around, um, if it's okay with you, Ophelia, he's actually going to offer a hand and kind of like pull you along with him. Um, not the drowning moment. guy, but Ophelia. <laughs> just, just want to clarify. <laughs> you were off the boat. We already passed you. I think like Willie wanted to help Waldo, but we were so far gone at that point that like there was no or something. I, 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 there has to be another option than pass by me and help Ophelia, who just is giving you all migraines on purpose for fun. <laughs> Ophelia takes uh, Waleed's hand and says, "Thank you." Uh, <laughs> I will continue uh, towards the lighthouse with uh, Waleed's help. Now the migraines are intensifying. Waldo is crying out from the rocks. Um, now you can see some of the lights and the speakers, and you can see the apparatus. How does Monica actually like turn all this off? Oh boy, I I do want to like weasel in that Monica while like managing the boat does pick up Waldo as the boat is like careening okay. past. So that's where the water lock comes from. They're just hanging onto like the side of the boat or like holding onto a piece of him um, as they continue. Uh, so they use uh, their memory, their home, their flashback to mm. at least drown the noise out. And they pick one thing to stay in reality. And that is Miss Reimer's so passionate voice and advice <laughs> that's how they power through or at least have some sort of tether in reality everything else is moot at that point hmm. fantastic uh yeah and so um the steel worker monica is able to pull down the um the lights and the sirens and they turn off and, and you're left once again in what well, seems almost like deafening silence after it's all turned off, but um, the interior of the lighthouse beckons. I assume you all go in. Did I die? <laughs> Am I dead? You got dragged onto the boat by Monica. Wait, for real? Yeah. 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 Monica's the realist. Sorry, I blacked out after <laughs> Humna abandoned me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Monica saved you. You're waterlogged, but thank you, know, you yeah. Monica. <laughs> Listen, and we're gonna I can't have believe this... we're enemies now, just because. Not I her think characters. this is great. Me and you, Humna. <laughs> I think this is great. The sweetheart will lead, and the awful person, Ophelia, to team up. That's my. That's what I. Think you can't about. keep doing this with me specifically. This is the second this time, John. I'm getting you, Humna. <laughs> You're tearing this family apart. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well then, I imagine maybe I help. I can I can add some physical. I can do some physical labor for you, Monica, to help bring everything down under your command. Yeah, if you want, bring everything or I can, down, or I can stand out of the way too. That's also something I can do. Perfect. Um, so you go into this um, 
to this lighthouse. As you enter, you hear echoing footsteps in the stairwell, but other than that, um, while you're in here, you don't see any evidence. It seems to be abandoned. There is a slight ringing noise, um, barely audible. Uh, so you, you kind of explore this place. It's actually not a whole lot here. You find in one room a room-sized computer, like with reel-to-reel -reel tapes kind of churning and clicking. Um, you open another door, and there's like a laboratory, but it's been it's been taken over by mold and, and a variety of like bright blues and and uh, purples and reds. Every surface, every beaker and Bunsen burner completely covered in this mold. So you, so you close that door. Um, probably the other thing of note is that you find a replica of the island in a glass case. It's made of polystyrene with green flocking, balsa wood buildings. And this replica is filled with cockroaches. Uh, and each cockroach has a little transmitter grafted to its back. And they, they're kind of crawling around. It's just a, like a weird science display. Um, oh, yeah. There are four cockroaches where the lighthouse is, which is strange. But um... excuse <laughs> me. Are you afraid of cockroaches, Waldo? No, sorry, that was me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bob game. <laughs> That's so fucking rude. <laughs> well, I think we'll need. We... Oh, never mind. Go ahead. No, go. It was just going to be a snarky remark. Go ahead. <laughs> we love a snarky remark on this. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your back pocket for later. Um... So, so you find out some weird things about um, about the island, but perhaps more importantly, you find some equipment that might come in handy. So on a wall in one of the labs, you find um, a classified map. Now this map. It's similar to the one you already have. So you, you do have like a folded up laminated map that, you, that you're, we're looking at in Roll20. Um, but this map also shows in the sort of northwest, uh, the VIP landing area, which connects to some tunnels. Um, you might have time to go there during phase one. Uh, in a regular season of Deathmatch Island, you can return to the island with future competitors and you could stash this map on the boat and they could start with it and they could land at the VIP landing area, which would be a whole different experience. That's kind of where the recurring recurring part of the game comes in. I don't know how useful it will be today, but we'll see what happens. You, you might be able to hustle up there. Um, as well as that, you're going to find um, climbing gear, four lots of climbing gear. So that's an acquisition on your sheet. Uh, four lots of redacted acquisitions. We'll talk about what those are in a moment. And one level two redacted acquisition, which is an especially good one. Um, now, who was best in that? That was Monica. Eh? So whoever is best in the last contest is the leader, which is like just represents sort of social capital. Like you kind of won the contest, so you sort of call the shots for a bit, at least until the next contest. So Monica is still the leader. So as leader, Monica gets to divvy up the rewards, you get to decide who gets what. Um, so there is a competitive aspect here. So if you wanted, you could keep everything for yourself, uh, but you could divvy it up as you wish. So as I said, there's um, there's four lots of climbing gear, four of these redacted acquisitions and one level two redacted acquisition. So how do you want to divide that up? Um, of course, everybody gets climbing gear. That's ridiculous to hoard. Um, <laughs> I would personally like to take the level two uh, redacted and then if that's okay, above game. Oh, above game. Yeah. Okay. Be, be ruthless. You earned it. <laughs> and then everybody else gets the, uh, the level redacted. Okay. Perfect. So if you'll tick uh, those relevant items, so that's climbing gear, one level one redacted acquisition, and then Monica gets the level two. So for the redacted acquisitions, let's just roll those randomly. Um, let's start with Monica. So your level one one is a USB drive. Mm. So you can use these in any contest. You can, the good thing about these is you can use them in restricted areas too. So if you had these, when you approach the lighthouse, you could have used them. Um, it's not up to me to tell you why they're useful. It's up to you to tell us. So if you had the USB drive, you know, you can describe, you know, maybe there's like, you find a USB port hidden in a palm tree and you, you yes. shove this thing in there. Yes. And it does something or something. It's so filled your... with My Little Pony JPEGs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and one of the staff is a brony. 
Oh, I love that. And level two is the tranquilizer darts. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, that's dangerous. Wait, is it just um, darts? How do you propel a dart? Th that's up to Monica, I think. It could okay, be okay, a little okay. like tranq gun or it could be a blow gun. Or maybe it's just I just like, throw my bare hands. Yeah, exactly. like it's like it's a a, a darts like game at darts. a pub. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that actually. <laughs> uh, and then for Walid, it's a grapple gun, your classic Batman sort of um, grapple gun, could come in handy. Uh, Waldo, as you're exploring the lighthouse, finds oh more tranquilizer darts, but they're not as good. <laughs> I think I think you you have the darts, but Monica got the gun. <laughs> so you have to use you just have to throw yours, which is why they tier one. But Monica gets the tier two. Well, I'll give them to Monica for saving my life. <laughs> do you really want to do that? You can. Uh, oh, that's what that's what the scout's honor would do. <laughs> okay, so you mark no redacted acquisitions, and Monica, you can mark another tier one one. <laughs> Uh, and you can fill in the details on the sheet. You can replace those black boxes with the description of whatever it is, if you want to remember. And then finally, um, if runs fan fave, Ophelia. Fan fave. You get oh my watch. god! You got your. That's my you Rolex. Got your Rolex back. <laughs> yeah. No way. That's okay, so cool. funny. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely is it a Rolex. Her, is it her own Rolex? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely your watch. I think he's, I think he's trying to Damn, that they, watch. that they like confiscated <laughs> from you and now they're giving back to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you find it in one of the labs and it's like behind oh a glass God. case. And the, it's almost got like, um, you know, the little uh, like stick on heartbeat monitor things. It's got like like wires and, and uh, stuff attached to it and it's taking readings. It's just your watch. You can just pull that out of there. Yeah, I'm just going to pluck it out. So Good. To get my watch on. Doesn't go with the jumpsuit, but I'll wear it. <laughs> oh, no. The way he manifested that, incredible. <laughs> I feel it is a force of nature. Um, how that's going to be useful, <laughs> we'll find out. But that's <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> You'll figure it out. Um, great, yeah. So that's all. That's what all you find in, in the lighthouse. You, you've got you got a new map. You got got some useful um, gear. The morning is getting on. You know you've got limited time in phase one. Now, usually, I would ask the leader where you're headed to next. But if you look at the map there, you'll see there's only one choice. You just have to travel up the coast there and it's going to take you to the playground. Before um, we go anywhere, hmm. if I may, Tim, uh, hmm. I think Walid goes up to that little glass case that has a replica of the island and all of the cockroaches in it and is staring at it. And the way that the cockroaches are moving and whatnot, it looks like to Walid feels like a herd of sheep. And I mean, Z is good at herding sheep. That's quite literally what he does for a living. And I think if you'll allow it, um, Walid is going to start trying to push our four cockroaches that are mm. on this replica into the VIP landing area. Hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah, or like, okay. it's going to like try and like, if I can, just like, I think I in. think Walid is not going to like pick them up, but I think is going to try yeah. and like get them to like move there on their own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't need a roll for that. You've got the relevant occupation. I'll buy the um, sheep herding <laughs> cross transferable <laughs> to uh, cockroach herding. Uh, yeah, you managed to ship these cockroaches to the VIP landing area. Do you say anything to the others, or do you just do you just do it? I do it, and I wait to see what happens first. I do think Ophelia's, uh, like, near Walid, because after they helped them out, I think in Ophelia's mind, I haven't said it out loud, but they're like, okay, Walid's my person here. <laughs> but they're, they're my people right for now, until I can find the rest of them. Uh, so it's kind of, like, nearby Walid as well. But we'll see this happening and just be like, they just play with cockroaches. I'm not interested. So we'll look away. They won't take much interest in it, but they will be nearby. Well, something does happen, which is that ringing noise I described. That stops. Um, and you can all write down in your advantage column uh, an advantage, uh, which is asynchronous. That in oh. has an advantage. So you're not quite sure what's happened, but that ringing stopped and you can use that advantage in a future contest if you wish. 
and it'll tell you what dice to add when you use it. And I think when that ringing stops is when Waleed gets the attention of everyone else in the group and says, mm. do you hear that? Or more accurately, do you not hear that? Yes, no, the ringing, it stopped. Did, did you do something? The mm. cockroaches and Z will like gesture for everyone to come to the little replica. I moved these ones, the ones that were at the lighthouse. I mean, there's four of them and four of us. And so I moved them to over there where the VIP landing area is. And well, this happened. I see. Um, I'm going to try something. Oh, okay. Um, hold on. Does anyone have a handkerchief? No? Okay. No, uh, I mean, <laughs> you can... Oh, um, and I think uh, Walid was about to, like, tear off part of his shirt, realize that he's wearing a <laughs> jumpsuit. That's not really possible, and goes, no, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. And they're going to ruffle into their pockets and pull out the paper with the icebreaker questions on it. Oh, no. And kind of <laughs> sure. and use that, and, like... They're going to go to one of the cockroaches, not our one, just a random one, mm. and squash it. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, that happens. It's, it's kind of gross. It's harder than you would think to kill a cockroach. Oh, it's still wriggling. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, that was... Ooh, um... now, what, now, what did that little guy do to you? Nothing. Well, then just, you just go just around... Something would happen. I want you to consider something. Yes. Just a bold assumption that these little things represent us. You just mm -hmm. made one of our potential competitors uncounted for. Possibly. Oh. You just made a ghost. Well, to be fair, there were always a ghost to us. Yeah, congratulations. That was a really great comeback. Maybe you'll be advantageous on the battlefield too. With that level of wit, of course. Are you saying that Ophelia killed someone? No, I'm saying that they might be untrackable. Oh. So we should kill our one. Wait. It's what a rogue if theory. We die. <laughs> we could test that out. Let's test it on Ophelia. <laughs> Since it Hold, was wait, wait, their wait, wait, idea. Wait. It was not my... No, 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 no. You're the one who squished a bug for no reason, minding its own business. I mean, clearly it's somehow connected to everything that's going on. So just testing how it was connected. You can try it on me. No, we're not trying it on anyone. We should yeah, just Yeah, I'm going to veto go. that. <clears throat> Okay, hold on. You veto you're vetoing while volunteering, but you were just gonna put me on the platter? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Live with that while you can. <laughs> well, I think we could we should all just, you know, take a step back, take a deep breath. We're there's no use in fighting each other, right? I mean, the way out is to play this game, right? Is to get to know each other, to, you know, be a team, work together. Um, okay, so no more squishing. We're agreed on that. A team from here on out. An unsquished squad. An unsquishable squad. Don't yeah. hurt yourself, Captain. Unsquishable what? squad. That's what we're going to be called. <laughs> Great. That's our team name. Oh. The Unsquishables. What? Yes. It's like the Untouchables. Have you guys seen that show? No. Is that a show? No. Is that a movie? I don't know. The... Is Matt Damon in it? <laughs> As you're saying that, you hear an explosion somewhere in the distance. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. What if it was that one you squished? We don't know that. We don't know that. It might not be related in any way, shape, or form. A few minutes had passed. I think in that case, it's disconnected. Robert De Niro was in it. <laughs> well, why don't we keep moving while we try to figure out who was in this movie or show? Yeah, that's... We should keep going. 
Uh, perfect. Monica is the leader. So you, you roll out of the lighthouse and you start along this long path to the playground. Uh, now, I will say um, quite a bit of time is passing. You're not sure how long phase two is, but um, you spend a bit of time at the lighthouse and now it's quite a long walk from there to the playground. Um, there's kind of hazy high clouds, but the, the, the hot sun is behind this thin cloud cover and it's hot. You're probably sweating. Um, there's a cold sea wind, though, that cools you down slightly. Um, parrots squawking from the trees. Again, you don't really encounter many other competitors out here because you're out by the restricted area. Um, but you do hear in the distance uh, vehicles. You, you hear uh, like car engines. You hear the occasional explosion and gunshot. Like the stuff, the stuff going on, um, but just not where you are. Uh, so you walk along this path, and eventually. Um, what was a sort of coastal walkway gives out into, as you can see from the map there, it's, it's kind of a low area between two kind of bays. Uh, and it's sort of swampy. This is, it's um, like a wetland. So it's kind of moist and swampy. There's reeds and mosquitoes. And there's a big playground here. Uh, it's sized for adults. Another team is sitting down, um, basically waiting for opponents to come along, looking a bit bored. Uh, they are all very muscular and athletic. Um, and as you roll up, there's a challenge terminal, the same as on your boat here. Um, and before you have a chance to say anything to these other competitors, um, the terminal crackles to life and it's that same young man with the scar. And uh, he says... <laughs> Welcome competitors to your first challenge. This challenge is the playground. We call this floor is lava. In this challenge, your team will attempt to dislodge the other team from the jungle gym. The first team to completely remove the other team wins the reward. There may be explosions and snipers, so please be advised. And remember, play to win. Uh, and that um, cuts out. And the leader of this other team stands up as you come closer. And there's kind of, there's about 12 of them. So it must be multiple teams gathered into an alliance. But uh, for the purpose of this, four are going are gonna, to um, contest you. Uh, and there are two who seem to be the kind of ringleaders. Uh, the number two is a pro soccer player. Uh, everyone has their name and competitive number on the uniform. So you know that her name is Nazanin. Uh, she is a pro soccer player. And she's the number two. But the leader of this alliance is a person called Sunday who looks like this. Oh. Uh, I think they're actually currently shirtless. They've, they've like undone their jumpsuit and got it tied up around the waist, you know. And they're pretty muscly. Um, and as you come up and the terminal's crackled and the challenge is about to start, um, Sunday kind of walks up to you boldly and they say, um, look, uh, I'll get to the point. I've been waiting for a while. Um, my name's Sunday. I use he, they pronouns. I work out and I win. My team are winners. So I just want to warn you that if you take part in this challenge, you may get hurt. And that's a safety issue. I take that seriously. So the best thing for all of us would be if you just set it out, you let us take the reward, everybody's happy. Well, how do we feel about that team? Uh, well, I, I think it's always best to, to try and fail than to not try at all. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with a bit of friendly competition, right, Sunday? My team is going to win, okay? I don't know what you're talking about, your team or the winners. Maybe they've been winning up until now, but they're going to experience a loss today. You know what? I would never find myself agreeing with her, but we're going to knock you into Wednesday. How about that? I think Waldo leans over to the two of you and goes, are we? <laughs> yes. Well, it's it's going to be fine. And then turns to turns to Waleed and, and does like a cringy... <laughs> like they're wincing, but they're giving you two thumbs up. <laughs> Sunday 
Nazanin kind of leans over and whispers something to Sunday, who uh, turns back to you and says, uh, "Well, I'm glad to hear it, honestly, because uh, I'll have a love a love a challenge. Uh, don't say I didn't warn you. Um, I mean, no offense, but we call ourselves the Alphas over here, and well, oh, okay, that's we'll, why you okay. We'll see if you qualify. Didn't they scientifically disprove that? They did. I don't know actually. about your science, but." He just flexes a muscle. He said, I don't know about your <laughs> science. <laughs> <laughs> the only science I know is these guns. <laughs> yeah, and he does the, the pick jiggle. I um, like to think one of the biceps is Monday and one of them is Saturday. And he's Sunday. <laughs> he's Sunday. Oh, my. <laughs> Wait, that's <was> really good. <laughs> uh, and so with that, the, the, um, the, the terminal... Uh, jingle goes off again and it is time for the challenge to start we'll describe what happens after the dice rolls just like last time so this is going to be a challenge based contest uh, you are going up against um, where can I find them Sunday who is a CrossFit trainer um, and of relevance to this competition they are competitive and muscular um, <clears throat> Now, because this is a challenge slide, I'm actually going to roll two, and we're going to take the highest result. So I'm going to roll once for Sunday, and then I'm going to roll once for the for the playground itself, which has its own dangers, and we'll just take whichever is the higher result. So that's a six. Oh. That's not very, not very dangerous. Um, um, lower than the six. Lower than the six. And then you also have to deal with the playground, which is kind of brutal because it's all made of just iron bars. It's like a 1990s iron, you playground. you say. <laughs> I don't think she's a steel bender. Uh, Monica in the element. <laughs> uh, and there are hidden landmines and so forth. So oh, um, this oh, contest. I'm sorry, there's a what? <laughs> You're just going to casually. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the floor is lava. Uh, let's see. I wish it was literally Ooh. lava, though. Oh, oh pain oh. and suffering. Oh. Nar. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> the target number is 11. It is dangerous. So once again, you're going to take injuries if you fail here. Uh, it's oh, also exhausting. No. Okay. So just to enter, you will have to mark off one fatigue. So you're going to get oh. fatigued just by, by taking part. Just oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I'm God. tired okay. looking at this man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, all of you mark uh, one fatigue and then click on challenge beast and you can go through oh, God. the okay. roll thing. Okay. I think I have an idea of what I'm going to roll for Ophelia. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna challenge beast, of course, because that's what the actual thing is. Um, with a uh, difficulty of 11, and then the occupation that I think I'm gonna really stretch it here. Um, <laughs> I think I can use my occupation die, um, because I think very similar to clubbing, I've been to the club and they don't tend to not care much for me but more the celebrities i'm around and i get pushed and shoved around often um so i'm trying to keep i'm i'm used to keeping my balance especially in high heels as well um so i have that going for me that's what i'm gonna go with yes i can use my occupation <laughs> i can see ban being like what no I'm using it. <laughs> I would give it. That's a pretty good explanation. I would give it to drag. I can support you and think you're ridiculous at the same time. Those two <laughs> things can be true. <laughs> um, no other capabilities. I actually, if I use a capability, I have to spend a fatigue. Now I'm good. No other capabilities. Um, it's a one shot. Go hard in the paint. That's true. I, I want to save it because I used it last time as well. I want to save. <laughs> I'm going to save it for the next few um, events. Um, so no occupation, uh, no capability, sorry. And I'm going to trust Monica here. I'm going to put my trust in Monica. Because uh, I, at the very least, know that uh, Monica seems to have backed me in my pro proclamation that we are going to win this. Um, so at, at the very least, I think I have they have my back somewhat here. Um, I think Monica, yours is a D8, right? Uh, so I actually got yeah. that wrong before. You get a copy of the name die, sorry. So it would be a D6. Oh, name die. It'd be a D6. Uh, yeah, a D6. Did you get your own rules wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
hey, <laughs> it happens. It's Monday morning. You know, yeah. Oh it god, is it is Sunday Monday morning. Night. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday morning for me, so these future I'm there people, with you. I don't know, I don't trust them. <laughs> um, so yeah, one d six from Monica. Um, and I think and are you spending the acquisitions? Oh yeah, acquisitions. So um, do you now have that redacted acquisition you picked up? Which for you, I think, what did you get? The climbing you gear you and the wrist. Um, the wrist uh, watch. Yes. The wrist watch. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you could use the climbing gear or the wrist watch here. Yeah. Um, the, oh the two God. like diamonds next to climbing gear are there how many uses I can have of them? That's right, but you just get you okay. have one so far, so you've got one use. Oh, I only have one use of it. Okay, mm. you should, um, yeah, you should just have one. Yeah. You would uncheck okay, cool. it when you used it. That's okay, right. cool. Um, yeah, I'll use it. I'll use the climbing gear as well. This is cool. a, so, this mark is that off, one. and yeah, then you can just put one in that final box. Yeah, uh, so everyone's ready? I assume so. Yes. Cool. Everyone click submit and we'll see how this goes down. <laughs> oh, okay. What is wrong nice. with me? <laughs> <laughs> Waldo is not having a good day. I'm I'm just a man standing in front of a swampy <laughs> playground. <laughs> So again, we'll just do the kind of mechanical stuff first and then you can describe how it happens. So Monica and Waldo both get one injury again. Uh, you can describe what that is after this. Uh, now, Waldo, I think, are you about to mark off one with the dot on it? Yeah. I think that's right, eh? So that means you're going to get an advance here. So you oh, actually get um, an experience of that. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. So you've been injured so much that some part of you, like you become more capable. <laughs> It's just like I said, um, better to try and fail, you know. But it also means you take a notable random injury. So I'm going to roll that now. So you get a broken nose out of this. Well, uh, jokes on you. My nose is already broken, and this actually fixed it. So <laughs> I don't think so. I think it broke it worse. <laughs> well, you're what? You don't get to tell me how I broke my nose. <laughs> Uh, so Waldo and Monica both get, again, one new follower box, so 10,000 followers each. Now, Ophelia, you succeeded, but you're second best, so you get 60,000 new followers, or six of those boxes. And then Waleed was best, so you get 110,000 new followers, or uh, Jeezy, 11 of pizza those crust. new follower boxes. Um, and then with my advances, do I just pick anything under advances? That's or right. do I yep. do them in order? Uh, just to see how there's a like a dotted line, just pick anything above that. Mm. You, they don't have to be in order though you can pick one so just for the benefit of everybody else those options are you can advance your d10 so waldo's challenge beast could could become unlocked unleash the beast you can advance a d6 to a d8 so you can become better at something else that's not your primary um you could advance your occupation dice or you could add in a second occupation as you remember some other thing that you used to do which um could then be also be added to uh competitions so what what did you choose there um, I increased my D6 social game to a D8 because I'm yeah. definitely not getting stronger. <laughs> it's the other part of being a scoutmaster, right? Is the social game. Exactly. Yeah. I got to yeah. keep the peace and, and you know, sto so show strength in, in the face yeah. of uh, fear. <laughs> that makes total sense. Uh, so speaking of which, um, so Monica... We'll start with you because you got the lowest result there. Um, you failed and got injured, not as badly as um, Waldo, maybe. You don't need to keep saying that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, there's, so a, there's an instant rewind on the whatever recording, <laughs> like whoever's recording this <laughs> go down. <laughs> uh, so, Monica, I think when things kick off, you're quite close to this pro soccer player, doesn't it? Um, how do things go from there? Uh their hubris just really fucked them up this round, guys. Uh, they try to use one of the darts to stab Sunday, and it just doesn't happen. Like an a oh. actual jab with it and gets kicked or um, yep. rubbed up some kind of way, and they tumble, uh, like get folded in and interwoven in the bars. And it's just Oof. not a good look for them. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. And you sort of scramble off the back chips just as one of the mines goes off. So you're not actually too badly injured. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty nasty getting hit by those bars. 
Um, speaking of Sunday, Sunday has just um, shrugged off this trank dart and they're now coming straight as, at Waldo. What does Waldo do in self-defense? I let out a, uh, a shrill scream. <laughs> <laughs> And apparently fall and break my fucking <laughs> nose. Yeah, is it just a fallback? It turns out, since I have a previous injury of waterlogged, um, I'm too slippery for this. I'm I'm Ooh. slipping and sliding. Um it's it's just too yeah. lubricated over here on my on my end of the into the the jungle gym. So Yeah, perfect. Uh, Sunday doesn't even, they're too confident. They don't even really celebrate. They just like, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> they didn't even touch me. I screamed and slipped and broke exactly. my own yeah. <laughs> And they just nod like that's the expected outcome. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but directly behind work. Walter is Ophelia. So now Ophelia, Sunday's coming right at you. What does Ophelia do more successfully? It's a quick question. What exactly is the like arena? We're like on like... A big like network of iron bars, like a um, like a playground equipment. Uh, okay. So you're all like above bar chips, and, and like if, if yeah, in monkey bars. If you get knocked down, then you're out. Um, I think like I think for like everyone's gone to like very um, like smart positions to be off the ground in this game of the floor is lava. But I think um, Ophelia goes to the monkey bars and just hangs onto it, just kind of hanging there for a moment for a while, and then. Um, I think Sunday charges at Ophelia and I think just for the fun of it, they go for like a fully for like a rugby tackle or football tackle, um, but hit what they didn't realize was pretty solid abs. <laughs> um, <Wow>. And <laughs> they, so they just kind of just swing there for a moment um, as they try to knock them off this, uh, this monkey bar um, kind of gym. Um, and I guess, do I knock Sunday off or just, just me? I think, I think you knock Sunday back and as they tumble back, then they're not afraid to grab one of their own teammates to save themselves falling down. And they haul that person down. It's big, big beefy lad. And uh, he hits the back chips and he hits one of these mines, but he does not scramble out of the way and there's a massive explosion. And that person just died. Uh, but Sunday's still up on, on the monkey bus. Uh, and so is Oph uh, Ophelia. I think at this point, um, Waldo's down and Monica's down and a couple of theirs, I mean, one's died and one's fallen off. Uh, so it's two on two, uh, Waleed, how does Waleed win this? You need to knock down two people, uh, Nazanin and, uh, Sunday. I think Waleed, uh, the way that I will justify the use of my occupation die is that Waleed is very strong as it has a very muscular build. And so he's able to like just brute force his way through this and I think Walid uses the climbing gear in order to wrap yourself uh, and like ties yourself like onto the jungle gym so that even if somebody was coming to knock him off, they couldn't because he is quite literally attached to this uh, iron structure. And Walid had spent this whole time before Monica had gotten knocked off asking Monica for uh, for their um, own uh, opinions and thoughts of like where is the most structurally sound part of this uh iron structure of this metallic structure being a steel worker yourself you probably have some knowledge of that and so i think we'll leave this kind of uh, treating this uh like a little bit of a puzzle uh in that way and <sighs> Walid takes Nezanin, I think, who is nearby and like starts to push, uh, push her off. But as she's falling, I think Walid grabs her by the hand so that she is dangling off this jungle gym onto mm. the ground and looks at her and says, if you surrender now, none of you have to get hurt. Maybe we could all work together going forward. Who says that our team can't be bigger? Uh, she thinks about this for a long moment. Uh, she doesn't give a lot away on her face. And then she nods and says, I surrender. And I think Waleed like smiles this like big goofy smile and then brings her back up onto the structure and says, I'm Waleed. Hand out for a handshake. Yeah, she shakes really nice hand. to meet you. I'm Nazanin. Nice to meet you as well. And you see at this point, uh, Sunday is storming off in, in a huff. And uh, 
she kind of looks back at the rest of her team leaving and she says, uh, look, um, let's meet back up later, but uh, this is good. I'll talk to him. I'll bring him around. Uh, the more the merrier. Later. Bring yeah, everybody I, on board if you can. I agree. Okay. Uh, just so that you can find us later. Uh, and I think uh, Waleed will pull out the like little piece of paper that said zero followers on it originally that like came out of our little wrist watches um, mm. and is going to just like, I don't know, take some dirt off of the ground, <laughs> I guess. And then uh, like uh, uh, a mark onto it. Uh, uh, like a series, like a phone number, essentially, even though that's not actually useful in this in this moment. But sure. he can't think of another way to like maintain communication. Uh, and we'll just put like the phone number, put competitor ninety nine um, on it, and we'll just hand that over to Nazneen. Uh, she kind of squints at it for a few <laughs> moments. <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, well... If you somehow find a phone, and if I find one too. Yeah, of course. No, it make, I, I see. It makes a lot of sense. Um, total sense. Uh, okay, good luck. Don't die. I'll see you later. You too. And, she and then Waleed, who's just up. swinging there, is going to look down at the two that have fallen. Do y'all need help getting up? Do we win? Yeah, you win. There's like uh, confetti. There's a little like happy <laughs> trumpet noise. <laughs> oh, I think um, I broke my nose, but that's great news. <laughs> Oh, and a hidden compartment no. rises up from the ground, and there's like a big <gasps> gift wrapped um, crate. Oh, maybe it uh, has a nose spot. <laughs> <laughs> open now, it, open you it. Can, you can mark trust with Nazanin on your trust thing. Ah, yeah. Oh. So you can use that in future contests if you wish. To be gay. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia will like saddle up next to while Eden is like, Oh, exchanging numbers. <laughs> we need all the allies that we can get, right? Mm hmm. Allies. Of course, honey. I don't understand. <laughs> you know, one of, of my scouts is gay, so. That's good for them. I'm an ally. <laughs> That's good for you. Thank you for your uh, allyship. Service? Well <laughs> Yeah, I, I was think... going to say service, but I wasn't sure that was the right word for it. Uh, Monica picks up some of the confetti and just throws it at Waldo to celebrate. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody actually, want game, to... I'm pretty sure it's um, International Lesbians Day. It is! Actually. It's <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's go, lesbians! Let's go! <laughs> Uh, oh, does somebody boy. want to open the box? And it, like, Willie is still hanging from the jungle gym and is honestly pointing at Waldo and Monica, who are closest to it, I assume. You don't want to come down first? or I'm what? really good at knots. I can get you down from there. Okay. Sure. Scoutmaster knots, and I'll just... And <laughs> Monica goes to open. I don't mind that nickname um, if you want to call me that. No. <laughs> yeah, no, your nickname not. is knots now. <laughs> <laughs> That one's for the furries. You know, yeah, that's it. That's Wait, for the furries. Oh no, that, yeah. I don't get this reference. <laughs> Wait. I'll explain to you later. Yeah. I need to know now. I'm scared. You should be. <laughs> Tim, do you we'll know talk about it when well? you're older. Oh my god, when you're older. God damn it. I want to have sex with dragons. Why can't I know? That's scalies, but okay. Um, I know, but they're cousins or something. Um, this box. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you opened it up. Uh, inside is um, four, four lots of small luxuries. Um, you can define what these are when you use them, but they could be luxury food, could be like mm. champagne, it could be cigarettes. Uh, it depends on what your character finds luxurious. Uh, but they're little reward luxuries. Uh, so there's four of those, and there are two crossbows. So uh, Walid is now the leader because they were the best at that contest. So um, who gets what? So uh, well, everybody luxury. is going to get one luxury each because there's four of them, so we can equally distribute. And I think they come down with uh, Waldo, and they look at the two crossbows, and they go, I mean, technically, I, I know how to use one of these but 
unless there's wild animals around, I really don't see why I would I would need it. Um, uh, anyone else know how to use a crossbow? Peter puts their hand up. What? <laughs> why? <laughs> I used to go hunting. Yeah, for rhinos and elephants and whatever big game is illegal, I'm pretty sure. Not the Jimmy no. John's heiress, please. Actually, no. I didn't hunt wild animals, especially ones that are going extinct. I I had to learn because of my dad. Okay, so I haven't done it for a while, but I know I do know how to do it, and do do know how to use them. And Walid, I think, hands you a crossbow. All right, that one's Thank yours. You. What about you two? Anyone of you know how to use one of these? I mean, we have archery lessons in the scouts. Not quite the same, but close enough. Here you go. Uh, and we'll <laughs> give you the other one. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of these uh, pats you on the shoulder and says, "If you need to, if you need someone to teach you how to use that, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but I can. If we have downtime, I can show you." Well, it's got to be pretty easy. You just pull the accidentally. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> okay well yeah you hold on to that um but i'll you know these hands will be ready uh, your powerful hands the strong whoa, hands we've whoa, established it whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> you noticed <laughs> not the holding of the hand <laughs> i will i will like settle up to monica and just be like i i know we we ha we've kind of collided we've we've butted heads mm -hmm. um we kind of agree that we're not entirely sure we, we both not entirely sure about waldo having that crossbow right Is yeah it, I, just... I agree 100 that was okay. dangerous i've already okay. i've already handed it back to wally so you can stop talking about me five feet away from me <laughs> oh yeah sorry about that order um you look great my out nose there is broken, if, not my I ears i could fix that if you would like i can help oh. with your Okay. It will hurt a lot, but I can set it. It will hurt a lot. Wait, why yeah. do you know how to set cartilage? Is that even a thing you can do? Yes, <laughs> actually. Um, at least so you don't break it worse or it doesn't hurt as much. Okay. Okay, I'm okay. ready. Okay, I'm going to do it on three. Okay. Wait, like one. one, two, three, and then on three, or one, two, three, and then do it? I'm going to do it on three. Okay. Okay. One, two, and then on two, I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh. How does it's gonna... it look? And I think Waldo's bottom half of his face is just covered in blood at this point. You just see um a few like kind of wiping the blood off their hands go. It should be fine in a couple of it should hurt less. Um What kind of work did you say you did? Oh, I'm, a, I'm just an entrepreneur. Um, what does that mean? We used mean? to learn some of, you know, creating your own business, starting up, uh, uh, creating markets that didn't originally exist because there is a demand for the things in that market. Do you know, that kind of thing. What was your business? Oh, I sold perfumes. <laughs> I'm oh. committing to it. I'm committing to it. Uh, you said uh, markets that don't exist. So, so did you invent <laughs> perfumes? <laughs> No, no, no. This is. <laughs> I just set myself up for that one. Um... <laughs> this is making me think of Romeo and Michelle's high school adventure where they're like, yeah, I invented the sticky note. <laughs> so good. My no, father, um... the inventor of Toaster Turtle. <laughs> Well, well, I'm scrambling. Um, I think that's the cat. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't invent perfumes. It's just that um, I guess I suppose more specifically, <laughs> perfumes <Essential> that oils. <laughs> <laughs> essential oils. Um, actually, yeah, I know. Um, uh, the perfumes that 
more specifically help with, um, I guess the best way to explain it is like performance enhancing perfumes. They smell nice, but also help you in um, oh, uh, physical activity. They give you a boner. Uh, not that kind of performance enhancing. Oh. Though we are considering branching out. Because um, I've taken those rhino pills at the gas station and they do not work. I see. Um, and why did you Please need... Please start walking. Can we start walking? Yes. Let's start walking. Let's, let's, let's start walking. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation needs to be walked away from. I like, I like to think that Monica at that just turned turned on their heels. Exactly. Heel. About <laughs> face. In a and it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that brings to the next question. Where do you walk to? Because this is ultimately um, the leader's choice, really. But um, mm. two um, options here. You could go to the apartment blocks or this place called Sanctuary. I think Walid will uh, consider the two options that we have. That is, and looks back at the group, um, all of whom are fatigued in many ways. Uh, Waldo has a broken nose with blood dripping off of his face. And so I think he looks at the place marked sanctuary and looks to the team. We could all use a break, right? Yes. <clears throat> what I if need it's a, a, a misnomer? Oh. Is it that what that word be? means? I think so. Yes. When it's named after a thing that is very much not. Like it says it's, it's, like it's, it's labeled sanctuary, but it's like an anti-sanctuary. Like a Greenland situation. Like a yeah. Greenland yes. situation. I mean, it could be. Do, do you think that we have to worry about that? Do you think we should go to the apartments instead? I don't know. I just wanted to throw it out there. I mean, I think we can give it a shot. For okay. sanctuary, of course. Okay. Um, if it turns out to be an anti-sanctuary, we have weapons to protect ourselves from wild animals and... Um, each other so we'll we'll be okay well i don't have a weapon but you've got your fists right those sh very strong hands my, thank you wow i can't believe everyone has noticed how strong it's my hard hands not are. to notice no it's, it's very i hard use one of those notice. grippers no i can tell yeah you know they're supposed to be for guitarists so i don't play the guitar but you know you never this is know happening when you're gonna as we're walking to... towards right, walking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you get deeper into the island, um, the trails are more well used here and don't quite encounter anyone yet, but you see vehicles moving in the distance. You see people uh, in these brown jumpsuits moving around the island. Um, you hear, again, some explosions in, in distant vehicles. Um, and you approach Sanctuary, which is, as you get closer, it's kind of on this on this side of the hill. It's, it's a subdivision of cleared earth. And it's kind of dozens of identical executive homes like McMansions, but in a neat grid. Um, so each house is like a small mansion with a little turret, like little miniature castle. Uh, and there's about, I don't know, 50 of them just in the subdivision. And otherwise it looks abandoned. Um, but as you get closer, you, you um, hear people running and there's obviously a fight going on or something. Uh, the whole place is kind of in chaos. Um, and the situation here basically is that there's a woman called Callisto who's a telemarketer. Um, and her number two is a guy called Galloway who's a failed entrepreneur. I have something to get on with Ophelia. Um, <laughs> I can give them tips. They are basically They are holding forth from the center of this kind of like weird abandoned subdivision and they are trying to recruit people to their alliance, but um, they seem pretty ruthless. And when people basically decline the invitation, these other competitor teams, this is quite a big space. So there's, you know, dozens of competitors kind of hiding out in the buildings. Um, uh, these two are basically, they just shoot them with crossbows or, or, or hunting bows or whatever. So people are basically, it's kind of like join or die sort of situation. Um, so that's kind of the situation here. You can see that there are like more acquisitions and gear in, in the mansions, but you'd have to enter the um, enter into the um, the location to get at those. So I guess my question: This is the first time actually you get to choose the approach. So how do you want to approach the situation, and what capability do you want to use to do it? Like, do you just want to sneak through and not get noticed? That could be a snake mode type thing. Do you want to fight these people? That could be deathmatch. Uh, do you want to 
try and talk them down or talk some sense into them, which could be social game um, or maybe something else. And we all have to agree on one, right? You don't really have to agree. It's ultimately okay. Waleed's decision as leader. Oh, yeah, Waleed. Yeah. Above table, yeah. though, I, we can, I think, come to a consensus on how we want to approach it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I mean, I feel like this might be, if you're cool with it, uh, Drac, this might be Ophelia's time to be leader um, <laughs> if we want to do like a snake mode situation and kind of sneak through it. Yeah, I'm down for that. Snake mode. If everyone else is also cool with that. Can I? Yeah, can I don't I? know how successful I'll be, but I will try. <laughs> I believe in Waldo. Waldo will get one success during this game. I believe it. Uh, I just like, as I'm like walking beside Walid, I see uh, uh, Galloway and just like, I recognize him. <laughs> yes, and I dropped off the face of the earth <laughs> um, after a year of his business. I'm not entirely sure what he was trying to sell, but he didn't do so well. Yeah, oh. He was definitely an NFT guy, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, when that bubble burst, so did kind of the reputation. Never really heard it from them again. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Uh, uh, cool, okay. NFTs, you know. Oh. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, and I think I'm... you can see that Waleed's hands are like trembling around this crossbow as like he can see just how like precarious the situation is with all of the mansions everywhere. And Z looks back at all of the others as well and says, like whispers, I think, to everybody. How do we want to go in here? They look dangerous. We're probably going to want to sneak, I think. I mean, we yeah, we could bypass them entirely. they don't I seem Monica? like the type to be reasoned with from I'm a little out of my depth here, so I am um, whatever you all feel like I'll go with. Okay, uh, see if we can grab some stuff on along the way. I'll admit I'm not really used to all of that. Uh, I work with animals, and you don't really have to hide from them in my job. I know how to do it. There's some hiding and running away from paparazzi <clears throat> all the time. Let's just follow my lead. <laughs> Pretty sure no uh, one has okay, um, uh, trust in me anymore, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I'm going to roll the tag number. So this is a snake mode contest. Uh, I'm going to roll oh Callisto's dice. Her traits are that she is reborn and zealous. She's like a true believer in the island. She loves this place. Oh. Um, and her alliance kind of feels the same. So oh. the target is 13. Yes, that's a high one. So oh, bring that, bring whatever you got. Oh, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> that's uh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. <laughs> no reroll. The good thing is it's not dangerous or anything like that, so there's no like special okay, yeah. hatchets. Oh, God. Um, okay. So if you fail this one, you will just mark fatigue. You mark one fatigue to fail. Uh, yeah, so snake mode contest, target number 13. Good God. Operation as usual. Could be a good one to bring in your, your uh, another capability. We got luxuries, right? You mentioned luxuries in the yes, last your, event. Yep, yep. Do they have any mechanical value, or is it more like storytelling narrative? Uh, no, that is an acquisition on your sheet. So oh, you, it's an acquisition. Oh, yeah, on the top right of the oh, acquisition it's more like section. Luxury, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So mark one there, and then you could unmark it to spend it here, um, and that will give you one acquisition to spend um, in the dice roller. Yeah. So how you use that here? I mean, that's up to you to um, to describe later, but. Uh, yeah, I'm going to use... Mine is a champagne bottle, and I know exactly what I'm going to use it. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, to I do have a question. <laughs> hmm. uh, yep. So I do see, like, the little section that says total followers and, like, the number of followers and a die. Do we use those in-game, or is that for, like, during challenges or what have you? Uh, so once you fill all the new follower boxes, you would tick the top total follower box of 400K, so that's <laughs> when you get to 400,000 followers. At that point, your name die goes up to a D8. Um, oh. So that represents the fact that you've got so many followers that now um, the game... Your name, okay. 
yeah, exactly. The TV show of it all is starting to work in your favor because you're so popular. Um, gotcha, gotcha. So if any of you get to that point, let me know. But um, question. No, no, yeah, please. Does our asynchronous advantage mm. come into yeah, play at use, all? You can use that here. Yep. Okay. So if you want to so... use that, just check it off and you can add a 1d10 to the advantage box. Oh, and... dang. All oh, right. I'll do that. And I think what that feels like here is that just like in the lighthouse, everything felt kind of difficult and um, psychologically demanding. Whereas if you use that advantage here, it's kind of like you're, you just sort of enter a flow state and everything feels easier than usual. So this is a snake mode. Okay. I'm going to go Ooh. snake mode target 13. Occupation by entrepreneur. I do describe how um, I used uh, being able to run away and hide from paparazzi. That's true. Uh, and you're up against another entrepreneur, which I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Game recognized game sort of thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think no capability. I'm not going to spend any fatigue for now. Um, I'm going to use my trust in Waldo. Um, to bump my uh to add a plus 1d6 right is your name right, your, yep. your name die to 1d6 to that um and you're using the small luxury yeah hmm yeah i'm gonna use my small no i'm gonna save my small luxury i'm gonna save it mm -hmm. sure think... it is a 13. it is a 13. okay yeah, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use I it. don't want to pressure you. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. It's a one shot. Let's use everything. Um, yeah, so that's a one d ten. Okay. You said right. Uh, that would just be a one at the end on the acquisitions thing. What it's actually going to do? Oh, is just a one. Roll, okay. It'll roll a one d four and add that to your total, um, which can okay, actually make cool. a big difference. So oh, on difference. the other dice input value, we just put one. If you're spending an acquisition, just put a one in the final box. Oh, spend, okay. Says, but if we are using our asynchronous, we would put a we would write one d ten. That's one d ten right. okay. advantage. Yeah, okay. that's right. <clears throat> yeah, is everyone ready? Oh boy. Um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. I'm ready. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Roll them. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, Waldo, you did it. I did it! I'm oh, a star. but Ophelia! <laughs> I did it, yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Perfect. Uh, so, Ophelia, you mark down one fatigue. You take one fatigue here, so you get mildly fatigued. Um, and you get one new follower box, 10,000 followers. Uh, once again, Walid is the best star performer. So, you get 130,000 new followers, 13 boxes. Uh, and the other two get 70,000 or seven boxes each. Oh yeah. Uh, so our leads actually almost filled up the uh, the follower track, which is cool. No um, way! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done so far. I want to be popular. <laughs> um. Yeah. Cool. So we'll start with the lowest. Uh, Ophelia yeah. obviously took the lead here. I mean, it was all about Ophelia. Um, <laughs> how did things go badly as you try and sneak into this to this um, chaotic situation? Yeah, um, I think I'm I'm a, um, um, well, leader said let me go ahead to kind of lead the way, and I'm I think very gently um, tiptoeing by, like taking any um, like I guess it seems like we're like you know. And kind of almost like a neighborhood, so like alleyways and dipping behind any vehicles or things you see out on the street for cover. And I go by Galloway and then I freeze as I smell something in the air and realize Galloway's been Galloway smells a lot like one of the scents from my perfume line. Um <laughs> and <laughs> and and specifically, a scent that we haven't released yet. Like we're very much holding Ooh. on to this for like Halloween season, and like pumpkin spice. Where like it's pumpkin spice <laughs> plus a little bit extra um, uh, to make sure it's very clear that this is a Rima scent. Um, <laughs> but I smell this and I 
pause um and i think quite literally pop up from whatever cover i'm behind I'm, and i say that's my scent as it's out loud <laughs> in galloway's um in galloway's direction um fully exposing where i am at this moment and i think in that moment my eyes widen as i realize what i've just done um and i meekly try to hide again but it's way too late at this point yeah i mean he spins and as soon as he sees you like there's a moment of recognition and then he just shoots the crossbow he's holding and i think it goes straight through that bottle of champagne that you whatever you're going to do with that it just goes straight through it and shatters and um you don't take an injury yeah. but uh it's clear that he is coming uh for you who was next uh monica how does what does monica pick things up from there um so i spent uh, my trust in waldo just hearing some wilderness tips and how like avoid mm -hmm. uh twigs in the brush and whatnot uh and again out of their element out of their depth but they manage barely to succeed i'll also use one of my small luxuries i think they like ditch some smokes like to lighten their load quote unquote but who knows oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you drop the smokes and uh, i guess monica kind of leads the group a bit away from galloway who just rumbled your uh galloway is actually a chain smoker so when you drop those cigarettes he stops to pick them up and have a, have a quick smoke uh, so that buys you a bit of time so you're getting deeper into sanctuary now um waldo what's waldo's final moment of uh, first moment of <laughs> oh god <laughs> i can't picture him winning at this point so <laughs> no idea. uh yeah i think maybe he spent a you know kind of like v was saying uh spent a lot of time uh not snapping twigs in the woods trying to make sure his scouts can see deer and uh mm. and little forest creatures without scaring them off um and then i also used my climbing gear <laughs> so i think maybe also uh waldo's guiding a little bit of like parkour <laughs> mm. <laughs> through sanctuary where it's not like towering buildings but you know you you know scale scale a, a couple of smaller buildings or um something like that to uh increase the speed of the uh of the exit uh perfect yeah so you're up on these rooftops now um you have the supplies in sight you've lost the opponents um how does Walid kind of uh, bring it all home yeah so i think that uh walid was following everybody else's lead in particular ophelia and then when ophelia kind of whiffs it a bit um, i think Walid kind of uh stays back to make sure that she's okay and then kind of helps uh bring them along as well and it's through um through the sheer speed i think uh that walid has within them to be able to be chasing animals all day long you know that kind of thing um that is through that speed that walid is able to kind of uh bring us towards the final area and uh i also used a uh, my small luxuries as well and i think in all of this space, while he is very nervous, being surrounded by people who clearly have intent to kill. And that was something that Z was not sure was actually going to be real in any kind of way. And so I think it is um, in sort of uh, taking the, I think it's like a small bottle of some sort of alcohol and opens it, kind of like quickly downs it, hands it to every single one of you to sort of take as well um, in sort of a show of camaraderie and it is through those bonds that are being formed in this moment that it says okay this one's ours and we i think um kind of like jump down it through the window of whatever mcmansion we are on top of in the rooftops of and we kind of like smash through those windows completely foregoing the like uh the sneakiness, the quietness of our, of our actions at this point, because we are now successful uh, and are able to sort of take the materials for ourselves. Yeah, fantastic. And indeed you do. Um, I mean, the inside of these buildings is weirdly abandoned. Um, you know, they've got like high stud ceilings, three meters high. Um, uh, but other than that, they're just kind of like there's dust and gravel and dirt, but they're, 
long abandoned. Um, but you roll in here and there is indeed like a supply crate, which you're able to grab and, and then you'll get out of this weird location before um, Callisto's Alliance finds you. Um, and you find um, three lots of survival gear and um, three lots of uh, close combat weapons, which you can define. Could be knives, swords, machetes, whatever feels right. Um, so once again, we'll lead still the leader. Um, who gets, so there's yeah, three of each, uh, survival gear and weapons. Well, it looks at you all and says, teamwork has got us here this far. I believe that teamwork will get us to the end. I don't know what's going on here. I didn't believe that this was real, but after seeing all of that, I hmm. I know that I can trust you three, so. And Wally will just take a step back. They're all yours. Wow. Why'd you say it like that, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a choice. Uh, well, I, I would like, uh, and maybe maybe one of the close combat weapons is like an axe mm. i definitely have experience with an axe cutting wood no adjacent experience direct experience okay that that works if you um, if y'all don't mind i, no, I don't please. mind and and then i think each of you also gets a survival gear as well that's right which funny you, you say that it's, it's definitely scout stuff. You know? <laughs> uh, they take a, a hunting knife and then like shove the survival gear into Willie's chest directly. You can leave that martyr shit somewhere else. Okay. It's not martyr if you're going to keep me alive. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Really, I appreciate it. That's fine. Afila looks at the survival gear and we'll take that. It looks at the close combat weapon and kind of look at their hands and see like, I think they are like cut and bruised, but like beforehand, there were hands I'd never seen physical labor in their life. Um, so everything's gone down. <laughs> it's been quite a lot for them. Um, and I think instinctually they shy away from it with their kind of instinct being like, oh, I might break my nail. And then look at their nails and most of them like either messed up already or like caked in dirt and just sigh and takes one of the close combat weapons which i think would be a baton i think just like an extended like a, a retracting baton cool i guess i can use and... this <laughs> And while we have this moment in this little house, I think um, this would be a good time to do the second and final round of uh, trust building questions. Um, so let's do a round of flashbacks in in this nice uh, moment of camaraderie. And yeah, so same as last time, if you all um, ask and answer one question, and we're going to flash back to your match island. You're going to remember, um, remember some some things that might be a surprise. Um, again, this will be the last flashback before the end. So this is your chance to kind of, um, you know, if you want any twist reveals or anything, this, this is the time to do it. But up to you how that plays out. Uh, if anyone has a question for someone else, just um, jump in and, and go for it. I think as we're all sitting around for a bit in this brief moment of respite, uh, Waleed noticed the way that Ophelia kind of recoiled from the weapon and I think has noticed the way in which he has been kind of, it's been difficult, clearly. This is the first time that they are roughing it. And so Waleed, I think, just kind of like elbows you a bit very softly. Oh. Hey, this is clearly different for you, new for you. When was the last time you had to do something difficult? Like, really, actually difficult? 
they wince a little bit at this and then again were whisked off to another time another place um and you see ophelia behind a desk um essentially doing like a little bit of accounting um making sure the numbers add up um um and then they start Yeah, I'm going to go with it. They start noticing that the numbers aren't adding up quite properly. Um, and oh. you real and they don't seem surprised. They seem more disappointed when they notice this. Almost like this has happened before many, many times now. Um, and they call up their dad um, and go through a long, heated discussion um, and an argument and then a yelling match um, as they find out once again that their father has been getting themselves into some gambling troubles. Um, they ran through their own savings and started taking from um, what they could of what uh, Ophelia has earned. And then they drop the fact that um, the people they've messed with are actually dangerous not just banks that are taking loans out from but actual loan sharks um and i think the difficult thing ophelia does is cover this debt that he's um garnered but also cut him of his la her life because this has been a thing that's been happening even before she was able to find any kind of success, even just the pocket money she was able to earn at younger ages, um, ended up going to stuff like this. And now that she's able to earn and build for himself, have that still be leached from, she believes she deserved better than that, but it was hard nonetheless. Um, and I think she does tell this story, eyes like down, pointed at the ground, um, fully aware that this isn't probably isn't what you meant you probably thought meant more physical um labor physical circumstances but as you can tell this is probably the most physical thing they've ever really had to do and that's probably the hardest still they've had to go through i'm sorry i can't claim to understand what that's like but it's fine it's fine um I just, I'll be quite honest, this has been a lot, but I feel better because I think I'm actually have control over what's happening to me to some extent, a bit more than I did before. I get that. I should probably ask you a question. Um, or anyone, you know, doesn't have to be me. <laughs> you've helped me a lot. Um, and to be honest, I think at least for me, I'd say your greatest strength it has been the kindness you've shown me and apparently others as well. But what do you think is your greatest strength? <sighs> it's funny. Nobody's ever asked me that or anything similar to that before. Uh, to be honest, nobody's really ever asked me anything. Uh, and I think we kind of pan over to uh, a typical day in Walid's life. It's very normal. It's very, you know, um, up on the hills with the sheep, feeding them, shearing them when their wool gets too thick. Um, it's beautiful. It's in nature. There is the sun is shining. When it rains, even still, it is a gorgeous landscape but one detail i think sticks out to you the whole way through and it's that walid is alone always every single day of their life he's alone and i think he like looks at you with almost like a deer in headlights like he's not really even sure what to say to that and z says i think my greatest strength is probably that 
my resilience, I guess. Being able to push through difficult circumstances and not letting it destroy you. I know it's not the same, you know, it's not the same, but. Oh, it's definitely a strength and one I think we can all agree we've seen you show today. One thing that I hope that everybody has, right? I mean, Waldo, <laughs> you have uh, had a very difficult day, admittedly, but <laughs> look at you. Yeah, I'd, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I am really bringing the rest of this this team down. And, you know, if, if you wanted to just leave me here, I would understand, actually. Why would we do that? You know, weakest link kind of thing. I don't believe all that. I mean, a chain is stronger with more links, right? And I think uh, uh, Walid looks at Monica at that, like not quite sure if the like science on that checks out or not. But they are not looking at you in the slightest. There's this very interesting bug on the ground. <laughs> He's fucking that pebble up. <laughs> um, I think Waldo does kind of lean back and and turn his head over to Monica and goes, I mean. You you seem like you you can take the hits and and run with them. Like, do you ever, you know, before all this, did you ever make mistakes? And what did, what did you find out about? How do you, how did you move on afterwards? Pick yourself and back up. On that question, they two uh, start to contemplate. And we go back to that house, and instead of that uh, jovial atmosphere, despite of uh, frantic and messy, we see a younger Monica arguing with an older man uh, in full suit suitcase. Uh, looks like they're about to take a business trip, and the only thing they can say over and over and over again: "You know this is wrong. Why are you doing this? This is terrible." Why are you doing this? This is wrong over and over again. And uh, this paternal figure is not responding. They're just taking every blow, every dig. And eventually uh, it looks like uh, he's about to speak. And all he does is put a shoulder, a hand on uh, Monica's shoulder and says, you're in charge now. You know the numbers, you know all the accounts. I can't say no. And he's between, I'm sorry, and I love you, but says neither and leaves. And the regret comes in the form of leaving someone you care about and love in the worst way possible uh, with the chance or possibly knowing that they won't come back and they didn't. And we sink back into the moment and they say... I said some awful things to someone I care about. And I think I just keep living. It's, I don't know how long that's going to be given the circumstances, but yeah. Uh, that really, really, really sucked, you know? Uh, so Scoutmaster, since we're asking questions and getting all chummy, uh, tell me about a time you quit a job and why. Oh, um. And he goes really quiet. Uh, and then, uh, we kind of fade into, uh, a scene of him sort of working in a cubicle, uh, in a sea of other cubicles. And he's, hunched over, uh, and he looks a, a bit younger, uh, but he's hunched over a keyboard and you can see like obvious stress, like in his body language and in the energy he's putting out and the way he's like interacting with his environment. Um, and he's like, he's almost like 
glowering at the computer screen and rubbing his temples and he's like muttering to himself like i i just i don't understand i'm supposed to get all of this i don't oh, i just have to keep this up a little longer uh and then as he's saying that someone rounds the corner uh, and leans against the cubicle with their arms crossed and is like, you're up. Uh, and Wally, like, very reluctantly pushes back his chair, lets out a deep sigh, and stands up and walks to, like, a back corner office that's, like, all the glass walls. Um, and we don't hear the conversation. It, it closes. The door closes. We can see Wally and the sort of like higher up official looking person sitting on the opposite side of this opulent desk. Um, and we can't hear anything. It goes perfectly quiet. But we can see Wally get smaller and smaller and smaller until he's just like a little curled up husk. Uh, and then we see him leave. And right before he goes, he turns back and he goes, Thank you for the opportunity. And the person behind the desk basically rolls their eyes at him. And he walks back to his cubicle to pack it up. I'm not really fit for the... for, for jobs, for work. Uh, I have a hard time, you know, concentrating and reading and math so um yeah i've had i've had more experience losing jobs and keeping them but you know kids they're easy to impress There's always excited by what you can accomplish, even if it's so far below what everyone else, your age, your experience can do. They don't care about that. Well, I think you're impressive. <laughs> yeah, impressive at mucking things up hey no i mean you keep trying you keep doing it that's impressive in my eyes thanks i guess it's just built in there like you have to get up get back up or, or what hey i meant it when I gave all of you all the gear, I meant it. I trust you all to keep yourselves alive and to keep each other alive. And that includes me. Wow. And as Walid says that, a klaxon goes off three times, piercingly loud, uh, thundering over this, the island. Uh, the day is getting late now. The sun is starting to set. This clack song goes off. Uh, great flocks of birds take off. You're in this, uh, the gloominess of this sort of abandoned McMansion on the fringes of sanctuary. Uh, and you realize that phase two has begun. And you hear engines start and people running. So now we're going to resolve phase two. Usually this would be a whole like procedure, but um, because we're doing a one shot, we're just going to do it with one um, one dice roll. And we're going to zoom out a little bit and do it a bit montaged. So this is kind of the Battle Royale. And the idea is only six people will survive. Um, now, because we know you've all got plenty of injuries left, you four are probably going to survive. And so the stakes are really that for each of you who succeed here, you get to basically decide the fate of some of the NPCs. So if you want someone not to make it, you uh, you can decide that. Or if you want to be sure that someone does make it, you can also decide that. And for each of you who succeeds, you can you can make one of those decisions. Uh, and yeah, we're going to do a bit montage. So we'll just set up the dice roll first, and then we, we can describe um, what happens. I'll just put another couple of NPC cards on the table, uh, just because 
they didn't come up because you didn't go to those places, but it uh, gives you a few more options as to people who might um, um, who might survive or die. So there's also Pratima, who's a college administrator, and Graves, who's a former CFO. I mean, obviously you don't know anything about them, but um, if you if you can't decide who else should survive, um, they are also options. Okay, well the CFO uh, is going right. <laughs> <laughs> um so the general situation of this whole like battle royale phase two again the sun is setting um Callisto's um alliance has set fire to the jungle so that everything's kind of burning and like a, almost like a ring of fire that's sort of uh, closing in on the survivors so things get more and more intense uh, over the coming time period um and so you might want to decide how you're going to approach that what are you going to do about self-defense the alliance is pretty ruthless as, as you've seen um the alphas are still out there and you have got this bond now with nazanin so uh you know maybe you want to like reconvene with them and and, and see how that goes um but i will just roll some dice uh, and we'll set up this uh, uh challenge number Bum, bum, bum. Okay, here we go. So this is going to be any capability. So you can choose how you approach phase two. Uh, so you just pick what you want to roll and you just describe how that's reflected in, in what you do and how you approach this. Oh All right. <laughs> I feel like every roll that you've done has been creeping <laughs> higher and higher every single time. This is yeah, terrifying. Yeah, I think you're cheating, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Oh, it was stressful. Okay. Doing some nonsense on the back end. Oh, Can't trust it. Yeah, that it was a dream. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Please, yeah. If we are full on fatigue, are we allowed to spend injury to add a second capability mm -hmm. to the roll or? Certainly, yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you suddenly you your leg lane? breaks just out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so oh, if no. you do mark an injury, um, we can describe how that comes up, how that happens during the phase two. I mean, the good thing is that could be advantageous because you might be able to mark in advance if it's one of the injuries with a dot. Mm. True wing. Wait, okay. So it can, it can be any role. It can be, yeah, you can approach it however you want. Um, so just click. So yeah, I mean, you kind of know what the capabilities are like, but if it's social game, maybe you're trying to talk people down, keep things, keep things on a social level. Um, if it's challenge based, maybe you rely more on your physical skill, like um, running and climbing and that kind of thing to get you through this this battle royale. Um, Deathmatch would be obviously fighting, um, and then snake mode would be more lying or, or sneaking. Yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of sneaking, I think. <laughs> um, also question, don't we get another trust from everyone for doing the flashback? Yes, good or... point. Yes, oh, yeah, good yeah, reminder. Yeah. Yep. So oh. you mark one trust. Uh, but this time just with the... Hmm, yeah, mark trust with everyone. It'd be easier. It's supposed to just be with the person who you asked and answered with, but I don't know if we can remember. I yeah, I, I asked... Yeah, I was going to say I asked. You did repairs, asked... didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, so for just me, mark it would two be trust. Ophelia. Yeah, twice because you get one for asking and one for answering. Yeah, so oh, you really? with like two trust with Ophelia and vice versa, two trust. Man, and I got three Waldo. trust with Monica. We are best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Monica feels the same way. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> <laughs> gotta help my old man. <laughs> uh, I'm like 45. Come on, <laughs> gotta help my old man. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. okay, I'm gonna go through this. Um okay, definitely gonna use snake mode for Ophelia. What is your um, name uh or your total follower at Monica? Uh it's a number. Let me count these boxes real quick and I'll tell you. <laughs> it's about halfway. Well is it is it hit four hundred yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet, yeah. Nobody said what, yet. What uh, die I need to add for the trust? Oh, I think that's D6. Yeah. Yeah, D6 is our name. Yeah. But if, like, like Humna's about to hit 400K, so theirs would mm. go up to a D8. <gasps> if they hit that. That's right. Yep. Yeah. If you, yeah, if I mean, you invoked their name. <laughs> have you met my friend Waleed? That sounds like the power of name dropping, you know? That's exactly 
you're right. Ophelia knows. Ophelia knows. Ophelia knows. Oh, also yeah, to double check. Uh, you can add acquisitions on top of each other, right? Or you just spend one. That's right. Yeah. Time. No, you can spend mm. as many as you want and just add all the, oh, the nice. numbers together. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, I'm ready. I got my oh shit my locked God. and loaded. Wild. I'm this is wild. <laughs> This is ridiculous. I'm gonna use a trust die. Can I use more than one trust die, or is it only one? Uh, you can use more than one. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'm gonna use one for Walid and one from Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> I better reroll, huh? Since I accidentally <laughs> sent it to chat. You know? yeah, yeah, you so I don't know about, I don't know about that. Um, so it'd be two d six, I think, right? Poor Waldo, dear God. Yeah, <laughs> After he's just talked about what a failure he is. <laughs> Dude. Um, and then acquisition. Um, what acquisition do I have? We'll lead to Waldo. You're like a cockroach. You're so resilient. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, probably take it as a compliment. <laughs> probably. No, yeah. meant as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Well, and taken. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just well. excited to uh, get another injury. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so much dice. I have 3d6 and a d8. Pretty, I should be able to get a 15 with that. All right? Yeah, do your best. Combat. I believe in you. Oh, I'm so stressed. If you roll um, perfectly, that's 26. I think. No. Dang. I'm not doing all that 18, math. 18, 18 plus 8. Yeah, 26. Yeah, 26. Oh, easy. That's if you roll perfectly. <laughs> Do you, Are you yeah. spending any acquisitions? I think I'm going to... This is the I'm last roll of the game. My... You should. Yeah. Well, there is will it be the last rolls. roll? It's not the last roll. <laughs> oh, not... never mind. Oh, never mind. I'm it's the one wow. that might kill you. <laughs> I'm the one that might kill you. I'm just trying to... <laughs> To sabotage me by feeding this me. This is lies. snake mode in real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, crap. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to commit. I'm going to stick with that. No, I'm not going to add any acquisitions to this. All right. Your funeral. Right. You're coming down <laughs> yeah, in this well, casket <laughs> with me. Not that it matters too much, but just for clarity, it does take the top two dice results from what you roll. So you're oh, so you couldn't Karen get a twenty-six. More like, no, you couldn't. Yeah, no. Oh, it takes the top two from the. It takes the top two, and then acquisition. You can only get a fourteen. You can't. Way. You can't pass. I can't pass that. Okay. Okay. In that case, you what? might want to spend the acquisition here. Yeah, I was gonna say because um, if you have a d six and a d eight as your two highest dice, the highest you can roll is fourteen. That's right. Whereas acquisitions get added on top. Whoa. So uh, if you spend an acquisition here, that gives you a shot. Okay. Okay. In that case, I I will use I'll add an acquisition then. Um, in my Rolex watch. <laughs> um, I'll can grab someone. I guess. In. Yeah, I'll figure. I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, Leave me be. A... You can have my Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Um, so everyone's ready. Yeah. All right. Roll oh, on. I'm so ready. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Oh no, Wally! Oh, ah! let's go! Oh, that's a fourteen. That's so rough, Monica. No, oh, let's Monica. Go. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay, so uh. Waldo, Walid, and Monica, you all mark an injury, and you all get ah! ten thousand followers. So one, one follower box. If you've met, I get an advance. Drop, yeah, yeah, choose an advance. <laughs> and I'll roll you up to see what injury it's going to be. So for Walid, wounded arm of some sort. Uh, and Waldo, shattered elbow. Oh my broken God. Nose. I'm falling apart. <laughs> I also get an advance because, golly gee, Willikers, why not? A golly G. <laughs> golly G. Uh, so, so I'm go one ahead and injury choose, away yeah. from dying, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> my advance is that I am upping my social game from D6 to D8. Okay. That feels right. Yep. I, my advance is I upped my occupation die from D6 to D8. Um, I'm advancing my capability die to a D10. 
Oh, the true challenge beast. That's uh, right. And then Ophelia, you get to mark 15 follower boxes, 150,000 <laughs> followers. Oh, God. I need to Wait, who got the here. broken nose? Uh, that was for Monica. Monica. <laughs> Look at us. And they had a I cricket you, nose. I think their I nose is spiked, we actually. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. Let's um, go from lowest to highest. Because only one of you succeeded, um, Ophelia gets to choose the fate of one of the NPCs. So you can choose someone to bring through with you, or you can choose someone who you want to make sure does not make it. Uh, whether they die by your oh. hand is actually up to you but either okay. way that's sort of your choice as a player yeah um i think galloway is going to be one to die um Oof. the scent the the rhymer scents perfume they're wearing <laughs> gave them away um and they got yeah, i think by things. someone that they um took out like the uh, team member of the person one of the people they took out when they were kind of guarding the sanctuary had their mm. revenge as they recognized that pumpkin spice, <laughs> pumpkin spice perfume. It's <laughs> not seasonally appropriate. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's like definitely got away. Cool. Okay, so let's start and see what happens again. It's kind of a little bit zoomed out. This whole thing maybe takes place over an hour or two as you kind of move about the island in this chaos and there's a bit of self-defense, like there's competitors um, fighting each other and, you know, it's a, it's a battle royale and there's only six survivors, so it gets pretty chaotic. We don't have to zoom in too much, but I'm just curious how each of you approaches it and where it goes wrong for my, for most of you. <laughs> um, so Waldo and Waleed both got 11. So either of you could um, could start if either of you want to jump in. Would you like to go, Vanna, or do you want me to? <laughs> I, I have just no preference. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll go then. Um, <laughs> I used uh, Redacted and Social Game as my two uh, capabilities for this role. So I think what we see, uh, I, we see a montage of Walid uh, using the grappling gun to try and like navigate through this uh, battlefield in order to avoid um, being hit by people, but isn't actually um, using their crossbow for anything more than like warning shots or to, you know, like hit just near people's heads to, um, to scare them or anything like that. Instead, Zir is trying so hard to talk to people and to get them to band together. And I think it's with uh, Nezanin specifically that he ends up face to face with her and tries to convince her that we can just forget all of this. This is just a game. We've made something here. We've we've made friends here. We've connected and there's there has to be a way that we could just. It doesn't have to be just one of us. And I think he is putting so much faith and trust in Nezanin in this moment, and perhaps that trust is misplaced. And that is how Zir gets the wound on Zir arm is that Nezanin perhaps does not reciprocate that, at least not in its entirety. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I think Sunday is not far away in this moment, and there's kind of a moment of indecision. And she's considering this offer, but she looks to her leader, essentially. And um, she's a team player, you know, she's a pro athlete. Uh, and she follows through on the alliance. And um... Is Sunday's shirt still off? Oh, yeah. Okay. More than ever, more than ever. How is it um, more off? Is his <laughs> pants gone now too? <laughs> he's he's in the full nude, scaring everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she goes to shoot you, and it's not a, you know, did she intentionally not deliver a lethal blow? Not sure, but um, she does wound your arm. Uh, Waldo, what's what's going on with you? Okay, so here was my, here was my game plan is uh is i used social uh and then i uh i also added combat beast in there and then um my and i also used my survival uh uh pack or whatever that said it could mm -hmm. have food in it so mm -hmm. i'm gonna assume there was some ketchup in there okay um <laughs> And then I used my, what's the other one called or the other thing I used? Oh, I'm opening the wrong character. You used so much stuff and still failed. I know. <laughs> I blame it's you. Very, it's very um, water coded, I think. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and 
my small luxury was like, I don't know, something that would generally be enticing to the players. Uh, so maybe like, um, I don't know, I feel like a chocolate bar or something would be kind of. So Waldo puts the ketchup, French fries, hot, hot French fries. <laughs> Hot French fries. No, no, no. That's gonna ruin the plan. It's a, don't influence me. It's a chocolate bar. Um, it's it's Wonka's golden ticket chocolate bar. Um, <laughs> and so Waldo put the ketchup all over himself, and then and he, his nose is already broken. Uh, and he he's like all wet, you know. Uh, and so he's playing dead, and he's using his uh trust in Monica to kind of you know, try to try to go all in on this one. You know, what what would Monica do? Monica would go all in. <laughs> Definitely sounds like something Monica would do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, a proud thespian, uh, Monica. <laughs> so where Monica's ears are burning and they're like, what is happening? <laughs> Maybe Monica wouldn't go all in on this way, but uh, Monica would full send, you know, whatever they might be doing. Um, or Waldo thinks so anyway, <laughs> takes inspiration <laughs> in that. Um, but I don't know. I think maybe they're too scared and their breathing is too obvious. Like their plan was to wait for somebody to come and like check on them or try to loot the chocolate or, or, you know, loot their body and then jump up and like, uh, and then like, you know, ax them or, or punch them in the face or, or something like that. Grapple them. Um, but something went wrong. I think either Waldo was like, obviously not dead. <laughs> <laughs> was breathing too much or you know it did lure someone in uh but then couldn't follow through or like couldn't get a, a grip on them from the location that he was at just just flubbed it just flubbed yeah, it it's 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 galloway who walks up to your trip uh and he's not fooled for a second and he has a baseball bit and just like cracks galloway's it down. dead <laughs> no galloway's not, not dead before yet. this not uh, before this <laughs> Galloway's gonna die, but before he does, Not he by my hands. <laughs> shadows, shatters your elbow. Uh, he thinks he's taking you out, so he leaves you for dead. Um, he said, "I broke your elbow. You're probably gonna die." Did yeah, he yeah. take my chocolate oh, bar? Uh, he stood on it, squashed it. Yeah. That's meaner than taking. It. <laughs> Galloway said, "You're so useless that if I shatter your what? elbow, you'll die." <laughs> yeah, we're we're what, right. We're the unsquishables. How did he do that? <laughs> That's exactly nice. We're unsquishable, right. not a chocolate. A uh, chocolate is it? My God. Um, now, Monica, bit. you're not too far away, and Galloway's coming at you swinging this baseball bat. Um, how does Monica try and fail? Uh, I Stop think him. it comes down to Monica being strong strength wise, but not necessarily a fighter. Um, they hmm. use just about everything in their arsenal to fight the, the knife. Uh, the tranquilizer can't really aim that shit, so that was out of the uh, the, the full ordinary. send. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> but I will say they did use their trust in Waldo, and I think as the bat got <laughs> they got clocked with the bat, they fall <laughs> next to him. <laughs> They're just both lying there, and that's <laughs> just. <sighs> Well, Waldo tries to hold your hand with his hand he can still use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just two dirty, bloody hands in solidarity and failure. Never use trust with Waldo. I whisper, I whisper, <laughs> he squashed my chocolate. <laughs> oh, that's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta get this guy. Get this guy. <laughs> and that's when Ophelia like snipes this. Yeah, yeah Ophelia doesn't do any. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Somebody. the only one standing at this Somebody. point. What does Ophelia do? Yeah, um, I think I think Ophelia sees all of this play down um, as they're trying to like again. They go um, arrow snake mode, so they were trying to sneak by everyone just to avoid combat entirely. Um, but <laughs> sees all of this go down. See, um, and then I think they see the bat shatter um, Waldo's elbow and then slam <laughs> smack. <laughs> Um, Monica in the face and breaking their nose and I think Galloway like, turns to face um, Ophelia and Ophelia just turns and runs and um, almost runs directly into another competitor and they raise their crossbow to fire at, um, at uh, Ophelia and I think I use my wristwatch I have to figure out a way to use this 
I think, um, accidentally, the whatever's left of the setting sun reflects off the mm. encrusted diamonds in my Rolex <laughs> into the eye of this competitor, and they fire wide straight into a uh, Galloway <laughs> collapses behind me, and I just book it. I just just keep running. Yeah, fantastic. Um, uh, so you you don't directly kill Galloway. Yeah, no, it was an accident. It was, or it wasn't me. <laughs> You're not morally <laughs> culpable. Um, and not long after that, as the others are kind of picking themselves up from the dirt, um, the klaxon sounds again, and uh, you realize that uh, you have managed to survive against the odds, phase two. The klaxon sounds, and the loudspeakers crackle, and that familiar voice uh, comes over and says congratulations you have survived phase two the end game will now commence in the pocket of your uniform is a small envelope that contains a set of instructions unique to you you will now split up and follow the directions to your individual waiting rooms where you will prepare for the end game failure to comply with this directive will be met with immediate corrective measures uh, and then the loudspeakers stop and so yeah you uh you each have individual directions to individual waiting rooms to split up uh you have been threatened if you do not do so um before the end game commences so does anyone does anyone wish to test that now or do you follow the directions and go off to your individual waiting rooms for the end game before we split up if i can walid will secretly take um the survival gear that he has and i imagine there's like some um uh like flint and whatnot like there's mm -hmm. like different pieces to the survival gear right mm -hmm. and uh i think walid is going to take uh different pieces of it and break it up so that they are like sharp long kind of pieces tools and will hand it over to each of the other competitors, each of the other teammates, not all of the competitors. So to Waldo, to Ophelia, to Monica, in the, under the guise of saying goodbye to them briefly. So I would like to spend my survival gear to give everybody like another acquisition functionally that they can use in, 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 the, in the form of something redacted, but I will let you mm -hmm decide uh whether that is fair or not okay uh mark off the acquisition you can all mark it as an advantage rather than an acquisition so you can put uh how do you want to describe that <laughs> shards of yeah i think they're like uh like long um like uh, like sharp shards uh that are mm. hard um so they won't break very easily but they're also not like they're not like metal, so they're not like super indestructible either. Uh, but they shiv. can be used. Basically, it can be used like a shiv <laughs> or like a lock pick or like you know whatever you might need to use it for. Kind of like a multi-purpose tool. Perfect. Right. Make sure. Uh, and so then, do you go your separate ways for now? You will reconvene surely. Yeah, I think Afia looks down at this piece of paper with instructions and up at the rest of the group um I, I i and you just really kind of see a panicked look on their face so and you can't really read much more than that on them but then he will start to back away and then follow these instructions fantastic so if you follow the instructions you each walk for maybe 20 or 30 minutes it's a fair hike the night sits in it's properly dark now um and sort of hidden around the island like in hills or in some undergrowth or um, like in a shed or a building, uh, you each find your own little waiting room. They're all in hidden doors. Inside is just a small windowless room. There's a fluorescent light. There's red carpet, a leather armchair, and a glass of water. Uh, and you each have a few moments to catch your breath and sit down. The door shuts and locks. And then you have a moment to wait before the end game um, commences. Uh, sorry, just changing something in 20, there we go. Um, and now we will do the standoff. So for the end game, um, 
you've each separated. You're gonna six of you are gonna re meet up for the end game. The idea of the game is that you're gonna fight until there's one survivor who gets to return home with a lot of money. Um, but obviously, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could sort of work together to try and um, break the game. Um, but you have to decide now that you're on your own whether when you meet up with the others, are you gonna go with your hands up, like come in peace sort of thing, or are you secretly planning to betray them and stab them in the back? Oh my um, god. Yep. I can't believe your yeah. prisoner's dilemmaing us right now. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. Uh, so I'm going to deal two cards to each of you. So if you open those up in roll 20, you should be able to see them. They're the ones with the gray background. Uh, oops. Oh, what have I done there? Do we each have two cards? Yeah. I see them. I have yeah. two of the yeah. same card? Yeah, that's not right. Uh, they're both, I think they're both okay, the same, on. but one of them is highlighted, one of them isn't. Like, Yeah, do you have that? The highlighted one is So I one have... of them, the top one is highlighted, and one of them, the bottom one is no, highlighted. No, both mine are uh, break the game. Oh, okay. You don't really get a choice. You see, Waldo. <laughs> yeah. Waldo has no choice. <laughs> okay, Why not? Let me, let me deal with this <laughs> To make and... that decision for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is the stick? So in a moment, uh, you're going to put one of these cards face down. You'll see on the bottom right of roll 20 are some boxes. So you put your card in your box and it will play face down. So make sure you're clear about which one you're dragging on before you drag it. One has play to win highlighted. If you choose play to win, it means <laughs> you want to win the game. You are intending to stab your friends in the back and you're going to try and win this thing. Um, if you choose the one with break the game highlighted, that means you're willing to be a bit vulnerable here and you're going to try and cooperate and work together to break the rules of the game. Now, um, in a moment, we're going to have a whole contest amongst all of you. If you all choose break the game, we're just going to go into the redacted end game and the whole thing will be you trying to stop the game and escape production and get out of here that way. Um, if at least one of you chooses play to win, that person first gets a chance to backstab the others and they get an advantage because they're backstabbing, they're blindsiding, they're betraying. Um, and basically we'll play out from there until either there's only break the game players left or only play to win players left. And so what you have to think about is um, not only do you want to betray the others, but can you trust them not to betray you? Because if you think they're going to betray you, you might want to betray them first. <laughs> uh, and so that is, yeah, that is the pres prisoner's dilemma of it all. And so Everyone's voted awful. already? This is easy for everyone? Look, I, I, I know, I know. I don't trust any of you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you want to say character. that a little louder? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hold on, I'll switch mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm oh, wow, I hate decisions. Um uh It's a good god, thing you're I playing mind. a game that requires mine. decisions. <laughs> god, I wish I had people for this. I feel it would, uh, would love to have people to decide for them. Um crap. Okay. So I just drag it onto the screen, right? I just drag I'm it on. So nervous. Drag, drag it, drag it into the. Ophelia. Man, I don't trust drag. <laughs> Man, uh, this is about to suck so bad. Monica I, might be the dark horse. I don't know. That's. A, I'll be truly honest. I don't trust Monica. Me, um, <laughs> me, sweet angel baby. No. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm committing. I'm don't committing. Worry about I it. committed. I committed. <laughs> Coming okay. at you like a dark horse. <laughs> ready for, ready for. All right, let's start flipping these. We'll start with Waleed. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. All right, break, break oh. the game. Oh. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Kind of. Can you imagine uh, if I betrayed you in the last yeah, moment? Yeah. I'm <laughs> with this. Like, you're Hamna. I've, <laughs> I've played with you, Hamna. It's uh, not Hamna, it's Waleed. All right, we've got two break the games. Uh, now let's, <laughs> who should we do next? I'm it? so nervous. God, I don't yeah. know. Maybe do both of them at the same time. I'll cover my eyes. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I don't know if it is possible. I'm going to do uh, Ophelia next. Mm. Oh, oh, 
Monica, I don't like the face Monica. Monica. Oh my god. Monica, I swear to god. Monica, I swear to god. Oh my goodness. We did it. I almost, I almost did. The unsquishables. I was so stressed. The unsquishables. Which of us is Robert De Niro? Oh my god. (laughs) I need to understand I have not seen this movie. I don't know. I I don't know what you mean. (laughs) Okay, fantastic. So you all chose break the game against the odds. Amazing. Um so now we know that we're going to do the redacted end game. Um, and so you're going to try and break the game and get out of here together in one piece. Um, so the first thing we're going to do this in uh, three stages. So the first stage is going to be a scout. And so at this stage, you're all separated, right? So you need to get back together as a team. Um, and spoilers, we know that Sunday and Nazanin have survived, that the other two here, and they are playing to win, which we already kind of <gasps> saw with Nazanin shooting uh, Walid. Um, so this first contest is going to be about dealing with them and getting back together as a team, and then we'll go from there. Um, so I will just roll for them. Uh, and this is a redacted contest because um, this is you're trying to break the game here. So target 11, redacted contest. It is dangerous. Um, yeah, go from there. I mean, I'm always going to go snake mode. They're going to try and sneak by these people just not into, not getting involved with them at all. Um, That's your, like, companion one? Because you got to start with redacted, right? Oh, yeah, redacted. Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Mm, Um, That's right. Redacted, and then, yeah, that would be my additional. So difficulty 11. Um, Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to die. I think entrepreneur i'm gonna go again with hiding from the paparazzi <laughs> so entrepreneur applies um is anyone else really stressed out? i'm so I'm stressed, really stressed out. <laughs> totally fine i don't know what you're talking about oh my gosh you're so strong actually. v <laughs> i know it's so hard <laughs> it's so hard oh um, my god <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a fatigue. I'm gonna take a fatigue to add um, snake mode. Um, I'm, also, I'm don't we type stab in these hoes. Um, like one d ten on the acquisitions to use an advantage, or was that like that, further behind? Uh, if you use an advantage here, you can add that. But um, I don't know if you have any advantages. We have, have the shivs. Oh, you are using those? Our friendship shivs. Our friendship friendships. Yes. <laughs> that was synchronous. <laughs> friendship, friendship is the perfect uh, you, you can use those. <laughs> you can use those here, uh, but those are just worth 1d6. 1d6. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use my friendship. <laughs> my the friendship. 1D6. Let's all use our friendship and... <laughs> In honor of our friendship. <laughs> and if you are using fatigue here and you've run out of fatigue, you'll just need to make an injury. I think I feel you yeah. use fatigue to bring in snake mode. So, uh, Yeah, I um, I used fatigue and that's what brought me to all my fatigue. Oh, so, I see. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So is um, everyone... Advantage. I'm ready. Okay. I'm stressed, but I'm ready. I'm almost there. I had to redo a roll. Uh, and... Okay. <sighs> You said that um, if we use like more than one acquisition, it just takes a higher one, right? No, uh, no you add all the numbers together. Okay. So okay. if you use a two and a one, you could put in three. Okay. All right. Now I'm set. Uh, I'm going to use my survival gear, what I have left of it, and just throw it <laughs> at them as uh, an extra, <laughs> fell safe as an extra barrier. Um, so I'm gonna add a plus one, and <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm committing. That's it. All right, go for it. <sighs> nice. Are we rolling? Yeah, roll it. No. No. Oh Damn. Gosh. Only Ophelia again. 
I oh, can't believe no. I'm really confused. <laughs> the good news is Ophelia did succeed. So you, otherwise, <laughs> that would be a bad start. <laughs> I think Ophelia is an energy vampire and they're draining what? us. <laughs> that is rude. Well, you're not denying it. So I've done literally nothing wrong. I've helped um, everyone out where I could. Okay. And so Anakin didn't do anything wrong failed. either. <laughs> mark an injury. If you have no injuries left to mark, um, you can mark trust with someone to block the injury and then describe how they save your life, basically. So you can block I an injury with trust. get another advance. Uh, and so I am advancing my redacted die from a D6 to a D8. Mm, makes sense. Yep. And when you say add a trust, you mean you mean take one away. Sorry, take one away. Yeah, okay. use the trust. Yep. Well, I'm all out of trust, and I'm one square away from death. <laughs> <laughs> You've used your last trust. Yeah. yeah. Well, what could go wrong? I'm <laughs> all out of trust. I'm so lost without you. Um. Let's. Well, either Waldo or Monica again could go first since you both rolled a nine. Uh, oh, thanks oh, and so much. So in terms of new followers, Ophelia gets 11 boxes, 110,000 new followers. Oh, the rest yeah. of you get 10,000, one box each. Yeah, um, I don't know. All my fans are like dads. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the dads yeah, they're not on shaking media. hands. No, <laughs> they're on Facebook. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm too away from maxing out on my followers. Oh, I'm two away. Um, try I'm being nine away. <laughs> nine? <laughs> I'm nine away from my first uh, level up from followers. Oh, I thought you meant from dying. I was like, have you oh, not taken no. any? <laughs> no, so I am impossible? one box away I from death. I haven't taken, I'm also I haven't on taken any injury. Door, babe. <laughs> Me and I'm you good. I haven't taken, <laughs> I haven't taken <laughs> any <laughs> injuries since the beginning. I've only yeah, seen well, that's because you have your people do things for you. <laughs> Every time I get hurt, my people somewhere else that's suddenly right. get injured. No, <laughs> so this is like the worst <laughs> Dorian's Gray situation <laughs> where instead of a portrait, it's a Wait. real person. Oh, God. It's me. It's Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> it's Waldo, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of which, portrait. how does, as Waldo emerges from your individual waiting room and goes to find the others, <sighs> So we weren't we weren't rolling for an altercation. We were rolling just to get there. A uh, bit of both. So it's getting back together <laughs> and dealing with these two. So the injury could either be like you just you know it could be an accident or maybe <laughs> Sunday or Nazanin um, <gasps> mess you up on the way. You know you get ambushed. Oh my god! Um, yeah, they ambush me and they each give me a kiss on the cheek and I faint. <laughs> 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 okay, no, that's not gonna. Okay. Yeah, I like um, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did redacted, and then I added my challenge beast. So maybe I just push myself too hard. Like I'm really determined to be there for like these people I've just met, but I feel very like beholden to and protective of, despite I seemingly not be able to protect myself, let alone other people. Um. And I think I just like, I think I just go too hard on the way there. So by the time I arrive, I'm like out of breath. Um, I've tripped like three to five times on whatever the terrain is. And I'm like all scratched up. I'm still covered in blood. Uh, what else did I use? Oh, and Monica, I'm just screaming your name the whole time. <laughs> Because I used to trust with you during that role. So <laughs> I used trust to block an, uh, an injury. True. And I used trust to uh, to inspire my, inspire, you know, uh, hoist my courage. And, uh, and so I think I'm just <laughs> screaming your name by the time I get there. And I think, uh, I mean, Monica, yeah. Monica's next. So I think Monica does come across you here. Perfect. Uh, as you do, Monica. <laughs> um, Arrows start landing all around you, like they're just appearing in tree trunks and on the ground, and you're obviously under fire um, from someone with a bow and arrow that you can't see in the darkness. Um, what does how does Monica approach that situation? Um, again, doubling down on not a fighter, got the strength though, and just <laughs> while 
uh waldo is using the name of monica to invoke strength and power monica uh is using their strength and trust in walid to keep moving forward <laughs> just their their energy and just back uh the talk uh back in the the sanctuary and still just fucked up they trip or something it's really bad <laughs> More pride damage than like their nose, which is probably crunched again. Uh, oh. It's just a mess. Um, also, side note, I used my shiv, so I imagine that's in my leg or something. <laughs> 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 no one pull it out, please. <laughs> that needs to stay in there. <laughs> uh, and you, you do meet up with Walid um, as you're making your way through the jungle at night. Um, you, you come across Nazanin who has been killed with, uh, she's got like an arrow through the chest. Uh, she is dead. Sunday has obviously turned on her to become the sole uh, winner. And you all are now being hunted in the jungle through the night uh, by Sunday, who has a bow and arrow and is shooting oh. arrows at you. Uh, what that does motherfucker's do going it? down. That's wild. <laughs> What is I'm shocked this by this, first of all, but uh, would you like to roll <laughs> an injury for me since I got an advance? Sounds good. You can have dislocated knee if you want. No, it's okay. I you think it's have funny. You dislocated knee if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's funny that we all have broken noses somehow. We're, we're called the unsquishables and we all have yeah. squished faces right now. I think it's funny. Except um, Ophelia. <laughs> Except Ophelia, Ophelia for some reason. Looking I think Christine. Well, he was relying on his trust in Waldo specifically and Waldo's uh, knowledge about the jungles and the wilderness and how to navigate through them. Uh, and remembering, you know, all of the information that Waldo has shared with the group thus far, uh, Waleed was trying to use that to sort of track down the other members of the group. However, Waleed is not very good at tracking um in this uh in this ter terrain and in this way specifically Walid is not a hunting tracker Walid is like a look for my sheep that got lost in the hills tracker so um i i think that z is not able to accurately um put the knowledge to practice and ends up uh, i think comes across perhaps witnesses Nezanine's death and Sunday attacking Nezanin. I think Walid attempted to intervene in that moment, and that is how he got the broken nose, was that uh, Sunday broke it in that moment. Um, but Walid managed to, I think, scramble away after that altercation and run away, and that is how Waldo and, or sorry, Monica ends up finding Walid is that Walid honestly like scrambles into you and like bumps into you, like not even noticing, like fleeing from something far away. And there's this very frantic energy to him as you reconvene. Yeah, I mean, so at this point, we've got the three, I'm just going to say losers, sorry, um, <laughs> together being hunted by Sunday. But Ophelia, you haven't met up with the others here yet. How do you save the group uh, and save the day? Yeah. Um, this entire time, I'd been sneaking as much as possible um using any and every bit of shrubbery or misplaced like a boulder or statue whatever is lying around in this terrain to just hide and as as gently as carefully as they can get towards um <laughs> get towards uh the the point that we're going to meet at and i think i watch probably from behind or within some bushes everything go down um, but, um, with uh, Nazanin, um, Sunday, Walid, Waldo, and Monica. And then I see, um, I guess, the bloodlust in Sunday's eyes um, after taking on Nazanin and then, after, and then watching them chase down um, the rest of my group. I think I follow as quickly and as quiet as I can along the way. And um, just as maybe we're climbing up or down some um, slippery rocks, um, 
I think I feel I fully think as I um, see Sunday raise to take another shot at the the group. I tackle Sunday um, off and just like push him off whatever this um, height is. It probably is just no more than a hill, a rocky hill, mm. um, and we both tumble down. But Sunday strikes a rock just the wrong way, um, and it takes him out. Yeah, safety first. Um, <laughs> and Sunday is now out of the game. It's just you four left. Um, as this happens, all the speakers, like a weird alarm goes off and all the speakers come on as this production realizes you're not playing to win and that same voice says... Um, Competitors 99, 97, 71 and 56... This is result 81C. It is interesting data, but we would suggest that now you have made it this far, please surrender immediately. If you do, you may all go home. We thank you for playing. Uh, and the speaker turns off. Now you see from where you are on the hill, up ahead is like a compound behind a chain, chain link fence. Uh, and there is a helicopter on the roof of the building. Uh, and coming out of that building are like several vans with the deathmatch island um oh deathmatch island logo on the side and they're kind of ripping towards you um now do any of you want to surrender at this point hell no i don't I trust turn to everyone else um yeah no i don't trust them either we're most likely going to be killed honestly we should run i'm gonna die either way so no you're not no you're not we're gonna take you with us okay Honestly, if you die at this point, I'll kill you myself. So we should probably. Okay. <laughs> Order of operations, figure it out later. It was a threat. Let's okay. go. Addition, multiplication. <laughs> <laughs> I told them I wasn't do, good at math. <laughs> you do the brackets first, and then you do. <laughs> uh, cool. We so run, we, right? Yeah, you're running. Right. Yeah, we're trying yeah, to get we cool off this island. I put on my so rollerblades. I've been hiding this whole time. <laughs> no, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look how fast we moved. <laughs> uh, so, in the interest of time, I'm going to collapse the last two phases. So, we're just going to do one final contest to see how this all plays out. Uh, so, the risks are there are these what are called incident response units, which are like guards and sort of gas masks, and who are coming to take you out. They're going to try and stop you. You see this helicopter on the roof of this building behind the chain link fence. So if you can get to it, you might be able to get out of here. Um, we're going to do one final contest. It is a redacted contest. Uh, for each of you on this one, it's a bit unusual. For each of you who succeeds, you can choose one competitor who survives and, and makes it home. So it doesn't have to be yourself, oh. could be yourself. Um, but basically oh, the so number of successes is the number of survivors oh, still that is somehow worse <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, okay yeah okay. you're also going to take injuries if you fail so some i mean waldo might die anyway <laughs> might i die. might also die i'm one Listen. injury away from death really? do you have any you trust just look better than i, I do. do i have two trust uh with ophelia so i can mm. yeah, i can't can avoid that no i don't have I any do trust need an injury left. roll though like Ooh. so we're oh, all you need an injury? even almost yeah, dead yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get. Oh, you're like I, you hope you get an injury. <laughs> no, I oh. think two of you still need an injury. Oh no! What's this? What's the? You have a ringing head and a black eye. Why uh. both? That's rude. <laughs> a ringing uh, head is enough of an injury. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, I shouldn't on. have said anything. Actually, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be fair. I want to die with you guys. Aww. <laughs> Look at us. Let's roll the final contest. The final All right. one. Low, 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 low. What's the target five, number? Five, four, ten. Okay, no, no. I think that might That's be the lowest awful. it's been. Wait, don't you no, mark? No, it was lower you... before. Hold on. Okay. Doesn't yeah, dangerous nine, automatically one, mark a fatigue? No, dangerous means no. if you fail, you take an injury. Oh, my God. I'm going to die. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're going. Is there a way to argue that a sheep farmer is relevant here? <laughs> yeah, you're running through the hills yeah, after yeah. your sheep. You know what? Yeah, Sound there we go. Thank you. The hills are alive. Um, I'm going to use one of my trust with Ophelia. 
for this. Yeah, yeah you're going to need the other one to block your injury, so. Yeah. Um, um, what was the advantage for asynchronous? Was that still a D6? Uh, D10. That yeah, was D10. D10. <sighs> oh, I'm also okay. going to use my friend shiv, uh, so that's my D6. <laughs> <laughs> friend shiv. Friend shiv, friend shiv. Um... Yeah, definitely need some occupation die for sure. Again, sneaking from no, away I'm from terrified. paparazzi. I'm, so I'm sneaking scared. away from. To clarify, these I cannot add another capability because the spinning the fatigue would kill me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. That is, that is you great. want to just least... die trying? That's so funny. I mean, that's very Waldo core. <laughs> you could, you could, you could die trying, and then if you succeed, you could save someone else. Oh, that's so dramatic. Um, Although, if you don't succeed, you just yeah, they, die for no <laughs> you reason. Just die. You double die. Also, very well, no core. I want to mark an injury <laughs> to use a capability. Um, and I think it's going to again be snake mode um, to be sneaking away. Makes sense. Um, do you need a? Do you get an advance out of it? Uh, no, no, I don't. That was my okay. first injury. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I sprained I'm really so sick bit. of you. He's doing so well. <laughs> um, okay. I could just uh, yeah, so, so tell me when you're ready and you can roll together. There's no way I get this. This is the least I... amount of things I've been able to add, so if I get this, I'm going to be resentful. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm also going to use. I saw the crossbow um, acquisition. Okay, that's that's, yeah, acquisition. So that's two. the last one. <clears throat> um, uh, that last. You do um, also still use... have asynchronous. Yeah, I have asynchronous and trust in what will lead. This is the last so roll. You that. might as well. Yeah, so I'm gonna use my trust in what lead for one d six. It mm -hmm. is right. Yep. Um, and then also add my one d ten from the asynchronous. If that's the thing I can do, can I do that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. So, okay, cool. yep. That's in there. Um, ooh, and then acquisition, I'm going to add um, the crossbow, which was a, is a plus two, plus one? Uh, uh, two. Two. Yeah, so, plus two. And yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's um, actually, you know what? I'm going to put all the things. I saw the melee weapon, I have to the baton. So I'm going to use the plus one to <laughs> plus three with the, the baton I have from a close Hell yeah. combat melee use weapon. Use both dual wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hold plus one in five. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so plus three total. <clears throat> um, all right, everyone ready? Yeah. No. Let's go, hit it. Mm. No. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go. There the dice no wanted a story. Way. The dice oh, wanted man. a story. <sighs> There's <Yeah>. no way. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh my god. I don't get a single dramatic Ooh. death. Um, Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, I'll die for fun if you want. <laughs> <laughs> So Ophelia, you get 150,000 followers, uh, 15 of those boxes there. Everyone else gets five, 50,000 each. Um, has Waleed oh. clicked over yet? No, not yet. Uh, I, I am have. actually four away from What? I that. thought you were closer I clicked than that. Over. <gasps> no, you oh, didn't. Yeah. yeah, I just needed two more to click over. Oh, nice. You, so no change wonder your you're an entrepreneur. Yet. You're yeah, the star of the star of the season. Um, <laughs> That's right. The fan. Ophelia fame. now gets a nickname. Do you all? I think the rest of you should choose a nickname for Ophelia. <laughs> oh my god! Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, oh, I'm. Uh, how about Snake? Snake. Mm. You've literally, but like in a good way. way. Yeah, you snake through the entire way. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, 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 wait! Instead of Snake, what about uh, what's the Medusa? <gasps> Mm. Medusa. I kind of like that. Oh. I kind of like that. Stops him in their tracks. Absolutely <laughs> paralyzing. <laughs> does have the shaggy <laughs> and the shaggy hair. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> Not the hair. Medusa. That's your nickname. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
Yeah. Uh, so stuff. let's start with Waleed. You are running towards this compound. These vans are coming at you full of incident response troopers. Um, how does Waleed sort of get you through the first obstacle there? Uh, I think with all of them coming in, uh, Waleed is used to chasing <laughs> around uh, the <laughs> sheep uh, through the hills and knows, I think, recalls back to the way that the sheep try to evade him and try to evade their like shepherding dogs and whatnot and tries to mimic those movements and tries to tell everyone else as well, like yelling out instructions basically of like how to move uh, in order to become uh, more evasive and sort of does that and is relying on Ophelia in particular, who has been so successful this whole time, so reliable this whole time and is I think allowing her to lead um, and it's kind of like one step behind Ophelia this whole time um, and is trying to make sure that Ophelia's like way is clear so mostly really is trying to be support to the rest of the group and in particular to Ophelia yeah and so those vans are skidding and sliding and and failing to catch you it's you know you're off-road so it's quite hard for them to, to get a beat on you but so you've made it to the chain link fence the vans have now overshot you and they're kind of peeling around doing a U-turn and coming in. How does Waldo get the team into the compound? Uh, well, one of the things they teach you in the scouts is breaking and entering. <laughs> <laughs> this is an advertisement for the scouts. In Please join. <laughs> of, in case of a fire. Uh, so, and someone's trapped inside and you need to get them out. So, okay. <laughs> so Waldo has uh, started the procedure, uh, which is mostly using a, a loose rock to break a window. <laughs> um, but safely add some safety measures so people don't uh, cut themselves up or catch mm. on uh, the broken glass and is, mm -hmm. uh, is helping everyone through and is, is going to make sure he's the last one in. It's the big strong hands. <laughs> it is the big strong hands <laughs> uh so you're all in this building now uh sirens going off um you're kind of in the stairwell it's pretty industrial uh you now hear the, the boots running of these troopers inside the compound trying to find you you're in one corner you need to make it to the roof uh next up is monica how does monica take over here uh, we are back into that focus fugue state uh, with asynchronous and just uh, using uh, that laser focus to make it to the roof or the, almost to the helicopter pad. And we finally get to use that USB port and just jam it into a door yes. uh, to bypass like the key gen or something. And they're just waving everybody in, not necessarily hearing what's going on, but they know they have people to um, pull along. Yeah, so you're making the final race to the helicopter. Uh, incident response troopers come pouring onto the roof. Uh, you're all trying to pile into the helicopter. Um, Ophelia, you see that older Indian gentleman who you saw the younger version of in the recordings, but this is the older version with the scar. Uh, he's kind of leading these troopers, and he shouts out across over the sound of the helicopter blades and says, uh, you're making a big mistake. There is no escape. Um, does Ophelia know how to fly a helicopter? How do you get out of here? <laughs> you know what? For this, yeah. Um, as the, everyone's scrambling <laughs> into um, the helicopter, um, I, I want to just figure out a way to use everything I've used. Um, I think yeah. they kind of, um, as they got into the compound and everyone started scrambling into the helicopter, they kind of dipped behind the uh, helicopter just for a moment, just to be out of sight for a, a second and hear this uh, man yell that to um, what he can only see is three of the com um, competitors in this helicopter um, as I use my snake to stealthily hide somewhere. Um, and then, uh, what did I use? What have I used? Um, trusting in Walid, so use my trust in Walid to um, one, hold their attention, but to make sure everyone else gets onto the helicopter safely. Um, I take this moment to just for a moment step away from it and um, and I use my friendship and throw it at um, <laughs> at the, the, the um, leader of this uh, group, mm -hmm. the, the person who seems to be in charge of this entire death match. Um, 
I don't think it's anything serious, but enough to have them like stumble backwards and maybe have their goons tend to them, like rush to them to their side. And in that moment, I dive into the um, helicopter and I don't know how to fly this thing specifically, but I've seen people who've flown me around fly. So I just <laughs> sit down and quickly just try to remember and mimic the the things I've seen happy, um, my people do over and over again whenever they've flown me. Uh, uh, honestly, the places I really didn't need a helicopter to fly to, but I had one, so I did it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, to get us out and off this island. Yeah, and so we see the helicopter choppering away, um, the smoke rising from the island from that big fire, and these incident response troopers impotently sort of trying to shake their fist, I guess, as you <laughs> fly off into the sunset. Um, and you made it. You survived. All of you, surprisingly. Uh, now, just very briefly at the end. Not so targeted. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like one scene each of each of you, like a year later or two years later, just an epilogue scene. What are you up to as you return? What do we see of your return to your normal life? You know, um, if you have moved on from the events of Deathmatch Island or, or perhaps not, uh, why don't we start uh, with Monica? Uh, though they survived, they have not left the island, not in like... A metaphorical sense they are trying to push this out and it feels like conspiracy theory or like oh i was abducted by aliens oh i was put on an island and made to fight to the death um so hopefully somebody somewhere will believe them and hopefully uh get some investigation started because this can't keep <laughs> happening uh anyone else want to go on i think uh the whole experience shook Walid's view on the world, on people, on what people are capable of, and it changed them a little bit. And they just no longer could be around nature anymore. It felt less, it made less sense to him after everything. It, he couldn't look at the wolves anymore and see what Z used to see. And so I think uh, Z quit uh, his job as a sheep farmer and instead went and sought out uh, Ophelia in particular and tried to find a position in your company if you would have him wanted to leave everything behind and start something different just in the city where there's lots of people, there's lots of noise, there's stuff around okay i mean i'll pick up from there i thought that's mm. very natural um i think ophelia i think for the most part like they haven't told anyone about what happened i think they they're fully aware that no one's going to believe them um if they do do tell these stories they'll be just seen as another um another conspiracy theorist just they have a bit more money no different to I'm going to call it out. They're going to see them like an equivalent of like a Scientologist. <laughs> uh, just like just spouting nonsense um, and just having a lot of money but in their pocket that people don't completely ignore them, don't completely um, blacklist them from anything business or um, uh, celebrity notoriety wise. Um, um, and so, But for the most part, they tried their best to return to normal. Um, but I think they kind of struggle. They, if, um, front facing, they seem fine, but they definitely have, I think, moments of like intense PTSD, of like flashbacks and remembering what went down um, on that island and seeing all the death around them and the death they took part in, as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and I think upon seeing um, Walid at their doorstep, um, they will give a um a job to a lead gladly i think at first they kind of just make up a position like you don't really do anything there's like just sit here and i'll give you money every hour <laughs> um but after a while um when they were able to actually properly look at what they needed in the company they get they do give or lead a proper job um i also think they would if um i guess this depends on what waldo does but if Waldo is still working as a scoutmaster they will try to sponsor the the group to just add more resources money and just physical resources to 
um, the scouts, they can really lean into um, learning the more hands-on practical skills that you do um, as, as a scout. Um, and yeah, I think they, every so often they do message their dad, um, but I don't think they really, they haven't fully reconnected. I think they still keep them at arm's length, but at least, the very least has them like as an acquaintance, someone they speak to every now and then, just check in on them and check up on them. Yeah, so what's what's the, <laughs> the final shot closing out with Waldo Vega? Um, <clears throat> well, I think when if you come to Waldo with the offer about funding the camp, he'll be like, well, you know, I've always really had this dream of, of opening my own camp, you know, splitting from the scouts and doing my own thing. So do you think Ophelia would be into that? Ophelia would, absolutely. They were like, <laughs> okay. okay, yeah, I'll just add another zero. Like a business um, investment. <laughs> 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 So, like, yeah, the plot the check just add another zero. Is this enough? <laughs> yeah. And Waldo just starts, starts crying. Um, <laughs> so I think by the end of a year, it's sort of like the campground's been purchased and uh, and Waldo's sort of gotten it ready and has kind of set the itinerary and hired people, uh, but it hasn't officially opened yet. And he's made sure that there's like no uh, games. <laughs> Like, you know how at camp sometimes <laughs> yeah, they yeah. have like challenges and and games and, and things like that. But it's just too on the nose for what they went through. Uh, so he's just like, every, all the play is free form and <laughs> we're not going to be doing any of that. Um, but it's like, you know, uh, the week before campers are supposed to be there. And uh, oh, also, I think uh, if it's OK with UV, um, Waldo just like texts Monica all the time. <laughs> Like, just fucking bothers them. <laughs> yeah, they partly have, like, coffee dates or something. Just yeah. catch up and, like, make sure we're still alive. We're still oh, tangible, physical people. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, I think it's that moment of, uh, particularly that moment of just screaming your name and the, at the end, you know, and you you f being right there when, they di when he did. Um, I think just sort of like, um, what's it called when a baby animal opens their eyes and <laughs> imprints? Uh, imprints. Yeah. <laughs> oh that thing in Twilight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. No, um, no why, you gotta, why you gotta bring that evil here? I yeah. imprint on you instead of your baby. Um, <laughs> I guess but I, I think the week before the camp opens, uh, Waldo is having one of his uh, familiar nightmares about uh, about the experience. And he's he's in one of the he's in like one of the counselor cabins, but all alone. Uh, and he sits up in this sort of log bed covered in sweat. And he looks around and he goes, I think I knew that guy. It's the guy from the ranch. And he's having this flash of memory of the guy in the helicopter and the guy in the video and the guy from the horse ranch that he brought the kids to. And it's just too much. I love it. It goes all the way to the top. <laughs> uh, so speaking of that, if we were playing, obviously this is a one shot, but um, so there is a version called New Game Plus Mode. So you can... Uh, oh play God. again and if your characters survive you come back in uh, but this time you come in knowing what it's all about and instead of doing the standoff where you might turn on each other you're all in it from the start to blow this thing up uh, so if Ooh. you know if we were doing this regularly we could come back in new game plus mode and these competitors could re-enter the game undercover to destroy it from the inside um, oh yeah so just to close out what were your initial motivations uh Hamna, what was Walid's uh, mine was connection. You're missing emotional connection in your life, and whether consciously yeah. or subconsciously, you know this is a place you can find it. Makes sense. How about Waldo? Uh, mine was survival, though I did a <laughs> shit job. <laughs> you survived! I you did, did it! Survive. But that's the only reason I didn't, because I thought, like, with survival, like, that probably means, like, I'd want to win, right? But through everything we experienced, it's very obvious I would not survive if I mm. went on my own. So that's why I yeah. stuck with everyone or doubled down on sticking with everyone at the end. Cause I was like, that's the only way you're getting out of here is if you lean on these, on these <laughs> kids. <laughs> and uh, what was Monica's? Mine was sabotage. <gasps> oh, no, not, 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 not that sabotage. <laughs> it was the sabotage the game, not oh, each okay, other. Okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. I, okay. I was so like, you hello? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, breaking. That was good for me. Oh, God, I, could <laughs> I could never. I could never. And finally, Ophelia. Yeah, man was controlled. Uh, <laughs> mm. You have a deep need to be the one in charge. You always want to be the leader. And if you can't be the leader, you want to pull the strings. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. on the nose. <laughs> well, yeah, I was say, I'm sorry like, oh, that I was like, the leader for yeah. the half the game. <laughs> no, you're good. I feel you never I, got hurt, though. So who was really yeah. the leader? <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like breaking the game still at least to feel it was like kind of taking a string because like they couldn't yeah, be the leader, so they, they couldn't control the game, they couldn't, mm, yeah. they weren't in charge of the game, so they took control. And I mean, Ophelia ended up being the star of the season, so that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, I took control of the audience with all my followers. Um, <laughs> um, and I guess technically I have some level of control over um, Waldo's <laughs> camp. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. funding you are, it. You yeah. are my only investor. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm also the um, um, I'm also a Leeds boss, so another level of yeah. some level of control there. Um, so I think it worked out. I think it worked. Out. I think the only yeah. one I don't have under my grasp is Monica, but you know we'll we'll give it, wait. Give it time. We'll see. <laughs> Next give it time. Good guy. <laughs> uh, well, that's brilliant. Um, I think we end it there. That was a blast. Thanks for watching. Um, you can find out more about Deathmatch Island at evilhat.com. And thanks so much to these wonderful players. Uh, Hamna, where can people find out more about you? Yes. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, just as a reminder, my name is Hamna. I use any and all pronouns, and I am a TTRPG performer and producer. Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Lilith TTRPG, uh, where I make all sorts of really weird batshit stuff. Um, if you like uh, strange, strange APs, you'll definitely like what I do. So uh, come follow me wherever you are. Uh, and I'll pass it over to Vanna. Hello, my name is Vanna. I use she, her pronouns. You can find me streaming full time at twitch.tv slash Vanna. That is V-A-N-A, -A, just like on screen. And uh, and I just want to add that Humna is also uh, an award-winning tabletop RPG. Mm. Yeah, award-winning. <laughs> just feel like uh, he left that out. Is so it what, just four <laughs> time? You won four awards, right? Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. weird. That's yeah, so four. weird. That's like a number that's bigger than one. I'm going to kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back into the Please island. Let's go, yeah, let's go back to the island. Yeah, yeah. Play the win. I'm going to pass it to V. Oh my gosh, hi again. I can't believe this is so crazy. We're meeting again. Anyway, guys, <laughs> hi, I'm Vin at VinFox VA on Twitter. Uh, I am a tabletop performer and a voice actor. If you want to be see me serious, like the real shit, VinVox.com. My resume, my demo reels, audio specs, all that. Hire me, please. Uh, speaking also, you need to hire Drac over there, wherever direction. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm Jack or Draconics. Yes. Hi, me. I'm a TTRPG performer, writer, and producer. So I produce a lot of TTRPG actual plays. Also write a bunch of stuff for TTRPG and different systems. And I perform like I did here. And um, you can follow me on Twitter at Draconics. That's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-E-S. Same username in pretty much all of the social medias, honestly. Um, God, uh, a project that'll be coming up soon will be I'm um, in a Orbital Blues a mini series over my first dungeon. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's a very cowboy bebop. And my character is very interesting. And I think a lot of people will enjoy them. Um, I don't know if they survived because we haven't done the last episode yet, but they're doing great so far. Um, uh, they're doing just as well as Ophelia, strangely enough. Um, uh, but yeah, that was, a, that was a, a lot of fun playing, but I'm going to throw it back to Tim. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, that'll do it. Thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Play to win. Ha, ha, ha.